okay. Sorry, I thought I was already muted. No worries. Thank you. Alex, you can go ahead and take that down. Uh, the meeting is, sorry, did, I might have been muted there, which is my mistake, but um, so the meeting is now being recorded. It is also being broadcast live to YouTube. And with that, I can hand it off to uh, the chair to begin the meeting. Thank you, Christopher. This is a call to order for the German Village Commission meeting, hearing. Uh, it is Tuesday, June 2nd, two. 2020. It is now 4.02 p.m. This meeting is being held virtually via WebEx. The next commission monthly business meeting will be at 12 noon on Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. Um, it'll be held via WebEx as well. The next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, July 7th, uh, and that will also be held via WebEx. Uh, all meetings will be held via WebEx and streamed to YouTube uh, until we are informed otherwise. Let's go ahead and swear in staff. From the staff, please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. James Goodman? I do. James Goodman, historic preservation officer. Thank you. Uh, Connie Torbeck? Connie? Sorry. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and for the truth? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, city staff who will be commenting during this meeting? I believe that is it. All right, uh, moving on to uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Christopher Lohr raised his hand. Uh, yeah. please, um, I will be. I'll be commenting mostly in a technical regard. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. uh, introduction of commissioners present. Uh, I will call down the role of commissioners. If each, each of you will unmute your microphones uh, and just say present. Uh, so the chair, Anthony Harkey, present. Commissioner Panzer. Present. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Thiel. Ned, you're muted. All right, currently Commissioner Thiel. Oh, I'm muted now. Ned, are you there? Looks like we have audio issues with Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Ferriel. I'm here. Uh, Commissioner Foley. Present. And Commissioner McCoy will likely be late. All right. Commissioner Thiel, are you uh, audio capable again?
It doesn't appear that he is. Um, I just instructed him to go ahead and try using a phone, okay. um, but I think we can proceed until then. Okay. I see his, his video going, not, just not the audio. All right. Uh, we'll move on to approval of minutes from Tuesday, March 3rd of 2020, our last in person meeting. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the uh, minutes of the Apologize. Uh, Tuesday, uh, the Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020 minutes be approved. Second. I should say it was Commissioner Panzer making the motion. Commissioner Ferial seconding. All right, we have a first, we have a second. Any questions on the motion? I'll do a roll call for ayes or nays. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. So much, Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Commissioner Bo Aye. Commissioner McCoy is still not in attendance. Motion passes. Moving on to items of public forum. And Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Ferriel. Um, I'd like us to uh, take a moment and uh, reflect on the many, many years of work that Commissioner, former Commissioner Scott Dewhurst performed uh, as uh, on the German Village Architectural Commission and then on the, uh, the uh, um, appeals board. So he passed away recently. He had been ill for many years um, here recently, three or four years. Uh, I don't, we don't think it was COVID related, but like to ask the commission to observe a moment of silence in recognition of his passing and his many years of service. Is there a motion for the, for the moment of silence? I think, I make ask, motion. I think asking for it was motion. All right. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Mr. Panzer. Motion. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. And Commissioner Durst. Aye. All right. Chair says aye. Motion passes. We'd like if we please have a moment of silence. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to approval of staff approvals. Mr. Chairman, I move for ratification of the staff approvals list. I move that uh, additionally that any uh, members of the commission who are required to recuse themselves notify the Historic Preservation Office uh, independently and that those be added to the record. All right, we have a first and a second. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. You still, I think you still doesn't have audio. All right, Commissioner Thiel, if you can give a thumbs up for an for a aye or a thumbs down for a nay, or you have an aye for Commissioner Thiel. Uh, Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Uh, Commissioner McCoy, uh, Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. All right, moving on to the applications for certificate certificates of appropriateness. Uh, the first item is GV-20-06-026. That is 310312 Beck Street. Uh, the applicant should be uh, Mr. Guy Rubb. Thank you very much. Uh, you would uh, please raise your right hand, Mr. Rubb. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. And Guy Rook. Thank you. I apologize for the mispronunciation. All right, uh, Connie. Okay, so this is for uh, the approval of, to remove a slate roof and uh, install a new asphalt shingle roof. Um, Documentation of previous maintenance and an assessment of current conditions have been submitted. The 
sufficient photos have been submitted to convey the overall deteriorated condition of the slate roof. Staff recommends approval of the removal of the slate and installation of the GAF slate line as proposed. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Mr. Rube, do you have anything else to add? I don't. Okay. I just want to say thank you for your application. Um, I know it came through during a rough time and we we're trying to find a way to, to make a staff approval, but we just don't have a mechanism to do that at this time. So I appreciate your patience and working with the system. All right. Uh, are there any uh, speaker slips, Connie? No. No speakers. All right. Questions or comments from the commission? Commissioner Panzer, anything? No. Commissioner Durst? Yep, I'm good. Commissioner Thiel? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yay, you can. Welcome. Hi, what happened? So looking at this, I mean, I can't tell, but the amount of repair work indicated seems to me still justified maintenance um, and not full replacement at this time. Commissioner Ferriel. Commissioner Ferriel, any quick questions or comments? Uh, no, it's fine with me. Commissioner Foley. No comments. All right, if there are no more comments or questions, is there a motion from the commission? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll move um, item number GV20-06-026-310 312 Beck Street move to approve as uh, submitted. A motion from Commissioner Farrell. Is there a second motion? Second. Second by Commissioner Foley. Thank you, Commissioner Foley. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take a roll call for, for the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Nay. Commissioner Ferriel. Commissioner Ferriel. Yeah. That's nigh, I see from the video. Uh, Commissioner McCoy. No, that's you. Commissioner Foley. Aye. All right, the ayes have it. There's one nay, uh, which is Commissioner Thiel. Uh, the chair also votes aye. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, moving on to Agenda number two, agenda number two, which is GV-20-06-027-188 Reinhardt Avenue. Uh, do we have Rick, Mr. Rick Walker from DeMarco Incorporated? I'm here. Welcome, Mr. Walker. Thank you. If you would please raise your hand. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record. Richard Walker. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Honey? <clears throat> this also is for the removal of a slate roof and installation of a new asphalt shingle roof, and also for the repair of stop gutters, like for like. Um, an assessment of the slate condition has been submitted. Photos have been submitted to convey deterioration of the slate roof. Based on a review of San Sanborn fire insurance maps, the house dates from 1901 or earlier. Um, and the applicant, or in this case, the uh, contractor can provide additional information regarding existing leaks and history of maintenance. Recommend approval. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Mr. Walker, do you have anything to add? Mr. Walker, you are currently muted. Sorry, Mr. Walker, you were muted when you were speaking. Anything to add? All right, looks like. Anything to add, but I'm happy to answer any questions. OK, 
Okay, great. Thank you. Connie, any speaker slips for this? No, no speaker slips for this one. Thank you. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission? Uh, this is Ned. I have a question. The CTL report was compelling, but they didn't talk about the remaining service life. What was the indication of the remaining service life of the roof? There is none. Any other questions, Mr. Fishfield? No. It, it answers my question. The CTL just said it was a cost benefit ratio and the roof needs to be re, re, uh, replaced. Terrible crackling from somewhere. It's the application. Mission Thiel, any more questions? No, that answered my question. Thank you, right, Commissioner Panzer. Uh, well, I've got two two issues, I guess. One is that we typically require two um, letters, and I'm only seeing one here. I shouldn't say we typically. We always require require um, letters from uh, specialists in state in slate roofs, and we are only seeing one here. And the other problem I've got with with this. Um, with this project is that the slate is a an intrinsic the way the slate is laid is intrinsic to the design of the house and simply replacing it with three tab shingles is going to lose that uh, design in addition to obviously losing the materiality of the slate and i'm wondering whether there is a, a manner by which that can be addressed or if it should be addressed Are you referring to the patterning of the roof? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Are you referring to the patterning of the existing slate shingles? Exactly. Which, Jay, you're in, implying that a three tap roof may not be the right material to use? That's correct. Well, I'm, I, I think that, that I'm, I'm implying that we're not just losing a slate roof as much as we dislike losing slate roofs. We're losing something that, that is very specific to the design of that house. And that that raises the issue to it. Uh, it's another facet of the discussion that I, that I think we should not lose sight of. So Jay, Jay would you be opposed to the idea of having asphalt shingles but keeping the I'll, I'll call it the dimensional patterning i would not if if there were an asphalt product and i'm not aware of one that could allow that pattern to remain i would have much less problem with it than i do now So now, I should also say we now know of synthetic alternatives that would allow that pattern to remain. But that it, it, it's I'm simply saying there's there's a, a design issue here, not just a materiality issue. Understood. Commissioner Durst, do you have any comments on? What is the history of maintenance of that existing slate roof? Um, we've only recently become involved in the project. Um, I do know, in speaking to the owner's representative, that he has undertaken uh, periodic maintenance, uh, totaling in, in the tens of thousands of dollars over the past 10 years. Um, maintaining and, and replacing slate as it's continued to deteriorate. Um, now, with the condition of the stop gutters being what it is and the fact that we need to renovate that, we'll have to take back 
several rows. Um, and we know from experience when we do this, we're going to lose a significant portion of the slate. Um, so there's really no viable method of undertaking the work that needs to be done on the stop gutters to preserve the house uh, without further damaging the slate. Um, at this point, it's our opinion that it needs to be entirely replaced. I, I would agree with the assessment of uh, replacement. Um, Jay's point is, is there a product out there? Is there an option out there uh, in your opinion as to the applicant uh, of something that a material or a, a product that could replicate the, the design aesthetics of the shingles that are there as opposed to just replacing everything with a standard three tab slate or three, three tab shingle? Not to my knowledge. We feel the GAF slate line product is, is the most appropriate for this particular home. Mr. Goodman. Um, what about mixing the products of the uh, GAF certain uh, GAF uh, carriage house, um, the GAF um, slate line with the certainty carriage house? What if you mix those two so that you could have that uh, Slate look in that area. Had you tried that before? Thank you. I have not tried that before. We have not tried that before. Um, using two different manufacturers, uh, obviously you you create a warranty issue. Um, shingle warranties are not typically um, that a factor. However, you know to the extent. It, it would violate any warranty. And then also there is a size differential between the, uh, the two products. So getting coursing and things like that would uh, be challenging at best. Mr. Good, and, and I think that you're aware, and I think other people need to be aware that, that I, while I have absolutely no financial interest in any of this, um, that the synthetic slate offer an option for chisel point slates in combination with traditional rectangular slates. Uh, the other thing in, in terms of uh, your suggestion that um, uh, mixing a GAF or certainty product, I mean, it, we have certainty products in terms of three tabs that are um, usable as well, that are, that are approved um, for the district as well. And whether it's possible to, to kind of follow what your notion of using two different using a three a, a rectangular three tab and then a a carriage house three tab might be more more appropriate uh, just to clarify i was thinking the slate line because it has the square slate look and then the carriage house you know it is different manufacturer but it has the cut slate look um and then in a as you were saying yes in a uh um a composite material um you can cut them or keep them straight. they they come in i'm i'm literally sitting here looking at chisel point slates from ecostar right now um perhaps we should be looking at a continuance for more more uh investigation if, if you're going to ask for continuance on this i I'd request um, better documentation photographs. I guess the question on the table is uh, um, for the applicant, we can only continue it if the applicant requests to continue. Uh, is that something you would like us to do or would you like us to vote on the application as is? Uh, we'd like a vote on the application as is. We not ask for a continuance based on requesting additional information. I have not come across it before, so I cannot make that statement there today. Generally, we want the the um, agreement of the applicant. Okay. All right. So, at the applicant's request, uh, they would like a vote. On the application as is. Is there a motion? 
Before we motion, Anthony, yes. um, another consideration perhaps is perhaps there are two products from the same manufacturer that do not match the existing exactly what would create a, a patterning um, that you could use from the same manufacturer as an option. I know the applicant's asking us to vote, but I'd like to throw that out there for consideration of, from the commission, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I, I'd be open to um, product options for the patterning. Uh, if if this were resubmit, resubmitted for a rehearing, uh, if we if it's voted down, if they decide to continue, whatever motion goes forward, uh, I would say that in my opinion, um, proof that there's not an, a viable option in another manufacturer, another material, I think would be uh, grounds for uh, a revote on it. So that said, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. This is uh, Jay Panzer on uh, agenda item number 2, GV 20 06 027 188 Lionheart Avenue to approve as submitted. This is Commissioner Ferriel, second. Right, we have a first and a second. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll do the call. Uh, just say yay or nay for your vote. Commissioner Panzer? Nay. Commissioner Durst? Commissioner Thiel. Nay. Commissioner Ferriel. Nay. Commissioner McCoy. Not here yet. Commissioner Foley. Nay. Chair votes nay as well. The nays have it. Uh, motion is denied. Um, Commissioner Panzer, do you have your book open to set reasons for denial? While Commissioner Panzer pulls that up uh, for the applicant's information. Uh, you do have the right several several options to appeal. Uh, if you reach out to county afterwards, um, she can advise you of the multiple routes that you have. Um, and if you want to come back to the commission uh, and reapply uh, under one of those routes, you are you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the uh, relevant Sections seem to be CC 3116.11.2. Distinguishing characteristics of a property shall not be destroyed. The removal, removal or alteration of any historic material or distinctive architectural features shall be avoided wherever possible. Um, CC 3116.11.5. Distinctive stylistic features and examples of craftsmanship that characterize the property shall be treated with sensitivity. Um, CC 3116.11.6, deteriorated architectural features shall be repaired rather than replaced wherever possible in the event replacement is necessary. The new material shall match the material being replaced in composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. Repair or replacement of missing architectural features shall be based on accurate duplications of features substantiated by historical, excuse me, by historic, physical, or pictorial evidence rather than on conjectural designs or availability of different architectural elements from other structures. I think that's the um, exterior cladding, 3116 11, exterior cladding of the structure shall be consistent with the original materials used on the property. Thank you, Jay. And then Connie, just important to note that it's not so much the, the material itself, but it's the, the architectural features, the, the patterning of the, of the shingles that is what uh, seems to be the most at play at this right now. All right. Any questions from the applicant before we, we close this one? No, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. All right, we're moving on to the next item, item number three. That's GV-20-06-016 Bravo. That is 1058 Jaeger Street. And we're expecting Mr. Jason Kenter. Here. Thank you. Mr. Kenter, your video is off. You please raise your right hand. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pardon me. I'm going to recuse my, this is Commissioner Panzer. I'm going to recuse myself from this. Um, I'm going to turn off my microphone and my camera. Mr. Cantor, if you please raise your right hand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And your name for the record? Jason Kentner. Thank you. 
Connie? Uh, so this is for a landscape and hardscape plan and relaying of the brick sidewalk and new limestone front steps have already been staff approved from this application. Um, and there were a couple of issues we saw uh, due to its quickly spreading nature. Any plantings of bamboo need to be securely contained on the property so it doesn't spread. And the question would be also, is a low platform deck appropriate in this location, which is not visible from a public right of way? And the guidelines uh, for um, a couple of guidelines are uh, provided on the, the side of your staff. All right. Thank you, Connie. Mr. Kentner, anything to add? No, similar to the last, I would just answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you. Yeah. On to the commission for any questions or comments. I wish we had Commissioner McCoy here, a resident landscape professional. So, this is Ned Deal. Connie's question regarded the bamboo. Yes. So is, is this a uh, bamboo that's being specified a non-spreading bamboo? It's a cold hardy bamboo and it is a raised Corten steel planter. Uh, so it is secure from native soil. It's, it's, a, it's in a pot, essentially. Pot, but it's in a pot. <laughs> okay. I have no objections. I will make the comment that uh, one thing we've been pushing for is, is permeable surfaces in the village. And it does appear this landscape plan does have a lot of permeability uh, in terms of um, materiality. Yeah, one of the things, it, it, it's subtle, it has to do with obviously the front walk piece, but we're also being able to reuse the existing concrete walk. We're cutting that into paver dimensions and using it for the little stepping stone walkway that's in the backyard that you can see in the second plan there. Those tall rectangles there where it says stepping stone slab path. Um, those are made from a, re a cut up of the existing concrete walk. Any other questions or comments from the commission? See no hands raised. All right, no further comments. Is there a motion on the application? Uh, Mr. Chairman, item GV 2006-016B, 1058 Yeager Street, I move to approve and submit it. This is Ned Thiel. A motion from Commissioner Thiel. Is there a second? Second. Ariel. All right, uh, we'll give it to Commissioner Theriel. Theriel, who's louder. Uh, are there any questions on the commission? On the, any questions on the motion? All right, I'll take the roll call. Commissioner Panzer has recused himself. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy is not here yet. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Thank you for coming in or attending. Thank you very much. Still getting used to the remote. All right, we're moving on to agenda item number four which is gv-20-03-021 that is 697 south fifth street we're expecting the applicant uh, sue grant yes welcome ms grant Let's see if I can get your camera show there we go please raise your right hand you swear to tell the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth i do your name for the record? Sue Grant. Thank you very much. Connie? And is Commissioner Panzer back? Yeah, I'm here. OK. Thanks, Connie. OK, so this is for a landscaping uh, plan. This application was continued from the March 9th uh, GBC hearing. Uh, from the comments that those co the commission made at that time, the patio has been pulled back and screened from the street in response to the commissioner's March comments. Recommend, recommend approval of the application submitted. All right, as Tanya alluded to, this is a continued application. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add? No, but I'll answer questions. Okay. 
Uh, Connie, any uh, um, speaker slips? No, no speaker slips. Thank you. All right, questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I wish Karen was here. This is Nick Deal. I remember us talking about the extent of how far this was going to go out the front. And I think there was some conversation about ensuring that the patio could not expand um, out after it was built later. And that went back to, um, I believe, uh, what she is now showing um, as taxes, six, four feet tall, to align with the Bucks's green velvet main area, to maintain the area of Bluestone Patio and Associated Planning behind the east wall of the original building, to keep it behind the face of the east wall of the original building. That's what I remember from our last discussion and from my notes from that. Can I? Yeah, what I a comment? Yes, go ahead. So you'll notice that this has the two um, existing large conifers. The previous plan had that same exact planting further out and the, the big conifer that's closest to the house was gone. So we literally just took the same exact layered planting that was on the first plan and we shoved the whole thing towards her main goal is she wants a garden to look at so we brought it so close to the to the patio and pushed the patio back that there, there won't be any place to expand a patio later she she doesn't want just a patio she wants a garden yeah and from my recollection uh this this application does meet uh the criteria we had which from my recollection again uh the patio net as you said to be no further than the uh face of the existing house so the bluestone stops there the previous pre previous application uh that was a a field of grass between the edge of the patio and uh the um taxes hicksi uh the plantings shrub if you will um that has now been replaced with actual plantings as opposed to lawn so i actually it was all patio before correct correct yeah i i just and like i said i wish karen was here i just remember her concerns about that she was, we were gonna, I wanted to replay, I wanted to leave it how it was before with the hedge clear out and remove the second conifer closest to the house. I wanted to leave all the hedges in and then just put the lawn panel in. And I don't think any of you wanted to have that happen because you said that lawn would be able to be replaced. So instead we just took the planting and shoved it all the way back and then allow that other conifer to be there so that's what her request was and yeah this whole thing actually i have it right here i can probably hold it up um it was i don't know if you can see it or not but this was the original one can you see that yeah so I marked up on this, on our screen, uh, the blue marked up uh, tree is the one that is now staying as opposed to being removed. Yeah, so all of the planting is the same. It just pushed up against the house. So we took away the opportunity to plant because it's even gonna have the um, the tree things, uh, the, uh, the tree hydrangea, and there's just, you would, you wouldn't get any paving in there because there's no room. I mean, if you didn't want plantings, you could pave, but the, the, she wants pay. She wants plantings. Yeah, I remember that conversation. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it was this. It was based on this one, where there's one tree here. You can see there's there's one tree here, and all of this planting. I wanted to just fill this in with lawn, and that was a no-go. And then this planting, and so that this, and then move this line with this. If we can take this planting and push it all the way back against it, so that there wouldn't be the opportunity to open that up, and paving. So that's what we did. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, Jay Panzer, I, you know, I, I was bothered by it, and I think that I, I'm still a little queasy about the, the potential for the taxes becoming um, 
the kind of the dominant backdrop of, of this thing, which I don't know whether I, I, I think is totally appropriate, but I think it is it is greatly helped by the amount of the hydrangea tough stuff that's in front of the taxes. But mostly the uh, by letting the the second conifer remain there, it will create a much greater sense of depth. I mean, it's partly going to create a greater sense of depth because there's more depth. But I think that it also will will help create a, a more a greater sense of depth from uh, from the sidewalk back than than we were seeing before. That that even goes beyond the actual pushback of the dimension. If I can point out that one of the most important things that I heard at the last meeting was that you wanted the entire historic cottage to be visible. And it was on the last one as well, but from all the way from the corner down where it says oak leaf hydrangea on the plan, all the way, the minute you hit the sidewalk right there, you'll have the full view of the house. It, it'll be the same as it is existing. It'll hide part of the addition. Excuse me? That it will hide part of the addition. It'll focus on the original cottage. Exactly. It'll soften the view. You'll still see the addition because it's, you know, out there, but it'll soften. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. It'll soften it. I agree. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Panzer, I have a motion. Yes. Uh, agenda item number four, GV 20-03-021 to 697 South 5th Street to approve the application as submitted. Is there a second? I second, this is Ned Field. All right, we have a first and a second. Are there any questions on the motion? I'd like a comment that the first vote to remove the Norway, Norway Spruce be removed. I couldn't understand. Can you restate that, Commissioner Dersh? In the agenda, the, bullet, the first bullet item to remove one of the Norway spruces is still listed. Okay. So, okay. Connie, on, on the agenda, the first bullet point there, remove one large, large Norway spruce that should be struck. No, that the Norway spruce is the huge tree right in the middle of the land of the front yard. That's it. It is going to be removed. Yes, that's still to be removed. Okay. Derek, you can clear on that. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the motion? I will take roll. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. The ayes have it. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number five, which is GV-20-06-028-123-0. Lansing Street. I'm left the record show that uh, Commissioner McCoy has, has joined as well. Commissioner McCoy, can we get a quick mic check for you, please? Yes. Great, thank you. Is that working? You're working. All right, we're expecting... Uh, it's like uh, Chris Tipton and maybe Jennifer Tipton. Just Chris today. Okay. All right, Mr. Tipton, if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Right. State your name for the record, please. Chris Tipton. Thank you. Connie. Uh, this is also, of course, a landscaping, hardscaping. Um, front walkway to be repaired and replaced. Uh, a timber retaining wall replacement and a grill, grill pad, flagstones in the rear yard. Uh, the, the one issue that the uh, staff, staff had issues with or had questions about um, the wood timbers that have been in, in place there since at least 2007, so they were installed by a previous uh, owner. Uh, the land, the lawn does have a slight rise behind the timbers, requiring some sort of retaining feature, although it's not a steep, uh, you know, roll. The, you can see there where uh, some uh, dirt has been added in as a planting area. Um, uh, the proposed limestone wall is of the same height as the existing uh, timbers there. And you, you've been uh, supplied with a, a elevation drawing and a section drawing of that wall. 
Okay. Recommend approval. All right. Does the applicant have anything to add? No, happy to answer questions. Great. I will do have one question. Um, the fence, is the intent to maintain the existing white picket fence or will there be a replacement fence going in? It'll be a replacement fence going in. We have a COA approved for fence replacement already. Okay. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? Just out of curiosity, what type is the approved fence? Exact same type and materials, and we're going to paint it the same color. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Yes. Uh, Jay Panzer, uh, uh, sorry, agenda item number five, application GV20-06-028-123 Lansing to approve as submitted. Is there a second on the motion? Ferial. Second. 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 Commissioner Thiel. I'm going to give it to Commissioner Ferial. He spoke first. Are there any questions on the motion? Is there any other questions? We'll go ahead and take a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Your votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number six, GV-20. 06-029. This is going to be 804 City Park and 76 East Casa Street. We are expecting Mr. William Hugus. Bill, are you there? All right. If you would uh, please raise your right hand. Looking for your video. There it is. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. William Hugus. Thank you, Mr. Hugus. Connie? Okay, so this is for 804 City Park and 76 East Casa Cos Street, which are to be, I'm not sure if they have yet, but they will be uh, connected buildings. Um, uh, at 804 would replace four electric lights with four gas lights and at 676 cost would add two uh, new 16 inch gas lights. Um, so the proposal, as I said, replaced some lights and adds new ones. Um, based on Sanborn fire insurance maps, the house at 76 East Cossus dates to 1891 or earlier. So the gas lights could uh, be appropriate. The current concern staff had was with um, uh, 3116.11, number three, each property shall be recognized as a product of its own time. Alterations that have no historical basis and which seek to create an earlier appearance shall be discouraged. Um, so adding those gas lights to uh, newer additions, uh, 804 City Park may be, may be historicizing that property. Thank you, Connie. Mr. Hugus, anything to add? Well, all I can say is, um, from my point of view, unfortunately, we've been using a lot of these lights everywhere, um, both historic and this this particular property, 804, is not historic. Um, uh, 76 is. Uh, the owner and the tier designer both selected uh, these lights. And that's all I can say. Okay. Connie, any speaker slips? No speaker slips. Thank you. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman, um, I think it's, it. well, first of all, it seems that six of the, it, it's Jay Panzer, six, six of the light, six gas lights on this property, first of all, seem extreme. Um, even having the two uh, at on the Cossuth property, although they're 16 inch and the carriage style, that doesn't bother me as much, but putting the carriage style lights, I think in keeping with um, 
with what the uh, HBO has to say about it, using uh, carriage style lights and especially in a larger size on a non-star property is just not um, is not appropriate. And I, while I, I don't necessarily have take exception, sorry, we're getting a public safety alert, and it means that my entire world blows up. Um, um, that that uh, while I don't necessarily object specifically to gaslight. Uh, at those the four locations on the city park, I do object to there being the the large carriage style lights, um, either a, a flush style or or a a, a more uh, a, a less a less historic profile of gaslight would be more appropriate on that property. Jay. Um, I don't necessarily disagree. I, I wasn't the person making a decision. If it were my decision, I would do exactly that on 804 and use a wall hugging gas contemporary type copper fixture, which we we have used. Um, but I'm not in the bird dog seat for this. So I'm just here representing the interior designer and the owner in whatever capacity I can do. I, I would, if these aren't appropriate to the commission, I would encourage uh, to do a staff review and approval of a contemporary version on 804 in lieu of. I concur. This is Brent Foley. I concur with, with Jay's comments. I think the, the three routes are either to strike the gas lights on the new structure, amend, amend the uh, application, to continue the application with the comments, or to move as Bill suggests, and I'd be interested in the other commissioners' opinions about staff approving the fixtures on the contemporary structure. I guess my question for the commission is, have we staff approved light fixtures before? I know typically we have a list of staff approval items. I'm just not sure light fixtures have been on there before. Um, Mr. Chairman, while we haven't, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think that we've had staff approvals, but I think that we have uh, in at times uh, empowered staff to review submittals of specific items uh, on our behalf uh, in a similar way that, uh, you know, colors or I think there, there are several instances that, that, that we should be able to think of where that's been the case. And I think that that would require the um, applicant to amend their application. I don't think that we can simply say, you know, either we're gonna vote it up, but we're gonna vote something up or we're gonna vote something down. If they want to amend the application, they need to amend the application. I, I would be in favor of amending the application for 804 to a contemporary fixture, gas, uh, copper, that would be a wall hugging fixture and reviewed and approved by staff. So for the commission, is there any, is that language sufficient for, for approval? Is there anything else that needs to be added to it? Or is it just a no-go flat out? I, Mr. Chairman, I would also recommend that, that a maximum size be set on that. Agreed. I'm agreed to that. Yes. Mr. Hugis, would you like to tell us what your maximum size that you would like to amend your application to be would be? Hold on. Uh, I would say no, no taller than 18 inches, which is slightly smaller than what we'd applied for. But being wall hugging, I think it'll appear plenty big for the structure. I don't want it to be too big. So I'd say 18 inches maximum height. Yeah, I, I think that, that since that's not a primary entrance that it's flanking, um, we definitely don't want to make it too big for sure. That's Correct. just highlighting a, a fenestration piece, which is not a primary entrance. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Please make your motion. Number 
set is Commissioner Panzer. Agenda item number six, German, uh, GB 20 06 029, 804 City Park and 76 East Casa, Casa to approve as amended by the applicant. Um, the amendment being that on the property at 804 City Park, a maximum of four gas light fixtures, which are to be wall hugging design not exceeding 18 inches overall height um, in addition to the two prop uh, the two 16 inch bevel gas coach style lights uh, at the property at 76 east casa all right there's a motion is there a question on the motion or a second on the motion i'll second it all right second by commissioner ferial any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. And Commissioner Foley, I'm not picking on you, putting you last. You just news the commission, so. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Chair votes aye as well. Uh, eyes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hugis. Uh, moving on to the next uh, agenda item, agenda item number seven, um, which will be followed by 7B as a separate item. Uh, number seven is GV-20-06-030, 648 Mohawk Street. The applicant is Mr. Hugis. Uh, let the record show that uh, Ms. Hugis is still sworn in from the previous application. Okay. Yeah. I have, to re I have to recuse myself from this. Right, if you please mute your microphone and uh, turn off your camera. I am afraid to mute my microphone and turn off my camera because I'm not sure they will come back on. I will leave the room. All right, if you, I'll, if I'll you leave, the, uh, leave your camera screen, please. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody text Ned when he's allowed to come back. Uh, All right, Connie. Okay, so this is for uh, addition of a new skylight on the house and then addition to the existing garage. The existing concrete block garage is non contributing. The proposed addition to the garage retains a historical scale of two smaller garages. The proposed side door window materials are appropriate. The proposed skylight on the house is on a new addition but may be visible from the street. Uh, recommend approval. Roger addition and the skylight with any required modifications by the commission. All right, thank you, Connie. Hi. Mr. Hugis, do you have anything to add? Well, I just, uh, the skylight was, uh, has been already installed due to COVID and our scheduling and lack of meetings and under construction. Um, I felt it was a good gamble since we were structurally um, in progress and want to dry it out. So I apologize commission for actually installing it early, but I really didn't think it was an issue and the timing just didn't work out given our crazy spring. So I apologize for that. On the garage, um, we're, it's a 1960s, I believe garage, but it could be fifties, uh, has rounded block corners. It's just very, nondescript and we were going to clad that in party panel and um, boral strips for a board and batten appearance since it's utilitarian um, and and the addition is pretty straightforward we've done a number of these like this and it beats a carriage house All right, uh, Connie, any speaker slips? No speaker slips. Thank you, Connie. All right, uh, questions or comments from the commission? If I could have Connie uh, repeat her recommendations on this, I'd miss that component, please. <clears throat> Connie? Uh, basically, just to recommend approval of the application for, for the garage addition and for the skylight with any required modifications. Uh, the only reason I said with any required modifications was I wasn't sure if there would be any issues with the skylight being 
visible from the street, although it is on, as I said, a new addition. Staff does not have an issue. Thank you, Connie. How do we feel about a 1950s era garage? I know it's nondescript, but it's certainly old. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> well, old is the wrong term. I'm sorry. It's it's of a term that would be considered historic. Outside the that's the question I was asking. Thank you. As of today, I believe that it is, although so long. I just wanted clarification on that. Thank you. I have a I, I this is a different question. I can't see the details on the uh, on the original house. Is uh, these are vertical fascias and case style gutters? Is that uh, and I and I can see that on the fifties on the original roof it appears that way. Um, is this a moment where they should be? What, what's on the main house, Bill? The main house ha has uh, perpendicular fascias the roof slope, but 1940s dormers and the original front porch had vertical fascias, which we've kept. And the garage had no overhang on the, on the block garage. So I, I didn't take that any further and try to create overhangs on it since it never had any. So it's it's a mixed bag, Jay. Well, if it's a mixed bag, then it's kind of fielder's choice, I suppose. Yeah, I felt it was odd to combine on the same garage two different gutter solutions. So why did you not draw the gutter on the east elevation? on the east elevation of what the garage yeah the east elevation of the garage there are three gutters drawn in profile and the fourth is missing because there's a if you look in the plan it's the garage is a siamese garage um, with the facade pulled back on the new section and that section that overlaps is a saddle a roof saddle there would be virtually a foot and a half of gutter, which I could put on if you really want to steer. No, no, I was just, okay. I, I get it. I thought it would be a problem down the road. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Bill, the... I didn't see if it mentioned it. The door going into the garage, two panel service door and flush. Is that a wood, fiberglass, metal? What's the intent of that side door, man door? Well, the reality is we'd like a fiberglass door, flush, no wood grain on it, if possible. Our experience is the wood doors simply don't hold up over time. Is that going to be on the addition portion or the original portion? On the addition portion only, and it'll be in the private backyard. The yep. privacy fence blocks it from the alley for okay. protection. And, uh, and I will note that this is the, the hardy panel. Um, we have definitely approved the hardy panel specifically, definitely on uh, auxiliary structures. Yeah, I wish Borrell would make a panel. Yep. But they simply, if they do, it's not available in this market. Yep. And then Connie, just for, for clarification, the Marvin Ultimate is on the approved windows list, correct? Yes, it is. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? No. All right. Motion. Have a motion. Go ahead. Agenda item number seven, GV20 
This is Jay Paper. 648 Mohawk to approve as submitted. Second. All right, we got a first, a second. Second is Commissioner Ferial. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. He's recused. He is. Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hugis. Uh, moving I've on to. I've texted Commissioner Teal to come back. Okay. Uh, item 7B, uh, which is GV 20 06 038. 186 East Sycamore Street. Applicant is Mr. Hugis, still on the record. Connie? Uh, so this is to modify a previous approval. Uh, the trim was not installed for the approved, approved plans. Uh, and the request is to retain the trim as outlined on your uh, your staff report and your agenda. Uh, the, uh, there were a couple of things also, the original COA, uh, which I sent separately to the commissioners, the original drawings, did you all receive those? <coughs> Uh, the original drawing said that the million between, between the sets of French doors were to measure five and a half inches wide and the columns and plasters to include a three quarter inch trim piece at the top. Uh, the app applicable guideline would be under ornamentation um, and the uh, page seven, six, and seven, and there was an, an illustration of those, uh, the typical trim on page 78 of the guideline recommends that all trim be installed per the originally issued approval. Mr. Hugus, anything to add? Um, the client in the construction process, they're, they're virtually complete except for the final sign off by inspector. The front porch, which had been an open porch and now enclosed in the 60s, we had a gotten approval for three French doors, three sets of French doors to open up the porch. Um, that is phase two now. Um, so only the, the entry French doors were installed. That's the reasoning for that. Uh, their intent is to go ahead with that down the road, but not at the moment. Um, the field inspector, I, as you probably know, in the past, these field inspectors really didn't seriously look at the plans, uh, which was a negative. Now they've gone the other route and really, I think, have gone overboard, especially on this one, because the detail that they're discussing and objecting to is the gable east end of 1970s edition that we were covering up. Um, and the original drawing shows, because it's a zero lot line, there's no roof overhang on that side. My detail showed a one by six rake with a drip over that. And that rake was proud of the freeze board that I showed and corner boards, which were overlaid the drop siding, not butted. But the carpenter and the contractor, I, and I was not aware of this and nor was the owner at that point, butted everything, which eliminated the rake board detail. And we didn't notice this until the inspector pulled it out of his comment list. And it's a metal roof with a very large drip um, edge on the rake. And a third of this gable is, is being blocked by the neighbor's house, which is literally within six inches of the property. Um, it is 60 feet off of Fifth Street view, the view you're looking at right now. And we were 
willing to accept it because it's a 1960s or, or early 70s edition that we pretty much putting lipstick on a pig and not really part of the original structure. So we were hoping that given all those conditions, it would be very, very expensive because we would have to rip up part of the roof in order to achieve the rake and freeze board that I originally showed. So we're begging for forgiveness on this one because of all those conditions and the expense involved. It really was the contractor's fault. I, I don't discount that. He's been good in every other aspect of this project except that detail. And we really looked at trying, how can we do this without ripping the roof apart? And we have not come up with anything. That's, that's my comment. All right, thank you. Connie, any speaker slips? No, no speaker slips. Thank you, Connie. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Jay Panzer, I mean, the, the problem I've got with it is that it's, it kind of can't help but just look like a mistake. No, 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 I can't do this. I can't. Um, it's a far thing I do that. And I don't know how we just go, oh, yeah, they screwed up. It, I, I, there, there are 1970s and, and certainly going back to mid-century, and Teresa would be better at this than I am, details that that kind of look like this, where everything is pared down and very simple and, and plain and plainer um, at P-L-A-N-E-R. Um, but this just looks like a mistake. Well, it is a mistake. I, well, well, no, I understand that, but sometimes mistakes you know, are, are, you know, sometimes it, it's a mistake that just is different than what was originally intended. And sometimes there are mistakes that just look like mistakes. And this just looks like a mistake. Or am I misreading? And I guess I thought to well, the, the, the other actual is stirring on the bunch and, and ask Teresa whether I'm off base here. With, with the dark color that I think I submitted a photograph with the dark color. At the east end, it does help it a, a bit from the public it, walk. I was just got it almost makes it worse, Bill. I, I'm it, again, you know, my my view is that that the the, the differentiation visually kind of what it's about is totally gone without any shadow line there. Yeah, I mean, I I would prefer to shadow line. There's no doubt about that. Especially with the trim painted the same color as the field. I mean, one option was to change the, the trim and paint a rake board on the east end, but I I really didn't like that approach. Now, the paint might solve the corner board, but it wouldn't solve the rake. It would not solve the rake, and it, it I've been told it could be thousands of dollars fix that detail. Hey, Bill, what was there? What was the condition there before the construction happened? Was there? It was T111, flush, just like it is now with the asphalt roof. Um, the old roof was a shed roof, um, only visible from the east side with a triangular window in the gable Dead. Did the did the roof overhang in the original condition before this work no. happened? No, and we can't because it's zero. It literally is on the lot line for the surveyor, so we can't even cheat that. So I guess the question, Jay, to your comment of can they even make that trim proud of the wall if they're already on the lot line without trespassing on the neighbor's property permanently? I think technically we would be trespassing, but 
we haven't broached that subject. By, by trespass, I don't, I don't mean walking on there. I mean, I mean, it's a permanent piece of the building that will be placed over the property line. Yeah, that's I'm not necessarily, I'm not sure that I'm buying that. It, it, you know, among other things, it's on plans that were stamped and approved by the city of Columbus uh, to get a building permit. So I'm not, you know, I, I get the zero lot line thing, but I'm not sure that I buy a three quarter inch permit creating a problem with the lot line. I, I, I do have another question, and that is, is the trim on the south side of the addition flush as well? The corner board, yes. Uh, the corner board and the trim around the, the French doors. Hold on. I'm not totally sure of that. Uh, I believe so. But they didn't, the inspector did not call that portion out. Inspector called out the east gable end specifically. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm looking at the one of the photographs does show it, and it oh, okay, it is. I, I and I'm I I didn't do that wasn't a gotcha. I I zoomed in on another photograph. To, okay, good. You have more there than I do at the moment. Uh, no, I'm, I mean I'm looking at the application. I'm just looking at. It. I have the benefit of a huge screen to look a, at. There's a Z flash at the window head, which gives it a little bit of a shadow line, but not much. Unless the commission has other ideas, I really want to avoid ripping the roof apart. But that's just me. Is there a is there a metal for? I mean, the the uh, the quarter board and the kind of the freeze board that wraps around could be done easily enough. The rake is the problem. Is there a metal solution to that? Well, that that could be. We can insert. There is the, the drip is installed is integral with the roof system, and it's installed very tight to the siding overall. Although we could slip a metal piece in there, I'm not sure what it would do though. I, no, I'm thinking about coming out. I'm thinking about something over the drip. Oh, okay. I'd have to go back to the roofer to find out if there's any, you mean like a, Almost a, second. Metal, a metal box? Mr. Chair. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Mr. Goodman. Um, what about the possibility of being able to um, put like a quarter by six shoved up so that you would get that second layer that we're not really seeing? I know it looks really, really, really tight there, but do you think you could put a quarter in there? I would, I would have to go back to the contractor and ask that question. I think that's a good point. I think that would, would make enough of a difference, though, is my question. Maybe not. I wanted to put it out there as a possibility because of how tight it is that you could put a quarter, quarter inch uh, ply cut down to, yeah. um, you know, what would give the respectable the exposure, right? You could yeah. trim it out in a different color um, or a tone, but I wanted to give yet another thought about how you might address what we've got going on. And Jamie, I think that what you just said was a great point. Um, I, I, as you were describing the, the quarter, I was going, no, 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 because it's all one color. You don't see it. It's not going to create a shadow line. But that last part where you said do a tone on tone, change the color a little bit of the trim. I think that, that, that the combination of those two things might do exactly what you need to do. Okay. And, and I know it's really tight there, but I was thinking that you could probably, you know, We've all forced. <laughs> the, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. What we only need to do is to get up under the turnout of, of the drip. You don't need right. to get underneath the whole. And there may be enough string. Whole metal. We could even do a, a three eighths board under there to give just a very minor shadow line. And if you change the color slightly or change the finish, same color would even be helpful in the sun. I, I think that's, I think there's a there there. My, okay, well, my two cents is there's a there there. Is there. Am I getting a sense of the commissioners that this is an issue that we need to revisit? 
I, I would say, Bill, my, my opinion is we should I, mean, explore. I can't watch all your faces in this meeting, so I can't read you. I would say it should, it should be explored because um, in the future, if, if those ends, those those boards, no matter what material they are, if they start feathering out a little bit, it's just going to make that, that condition worse. Given, the rate condition. Given that quarter. If that's the case, then uh, if, you, if the sense is the commission is not going to pass this the way it is, I would, I would prefer to continue the project and come back in August with something else. At least some options. July. Oh yeah. Sorry. Time warp. I keep yes. Okay. So we have a an amendment from the applicant. In, in the comments in the application, or do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Uh, Commissioner Panzer, uh, uh, agenda item 7B, GV20060381861 East Sycamore to continue the application at the applicant's request. Is there a second? Second, Karen McCoy. All right, we have a second from Commissioner McCoy. Have a motion. All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Field. Ned. Lose Ned again. I'm not sure he ever came back. I think he was recused <laughs> for this one as well. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Fair both eye as well. Motion passes. Thank you. How much time do I have between now? Since it's been continued, and I know the new deadline is four weeks. What What's the timeline for this kind of a condition to resubmit an idea? It's in the rules somewhere. I don't remember what it is, but it is in the rules. Connie. June tenth. Tenth. Okay. Thank you. Changed up. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Moving on to the next item. Uh, it's going to be item number eight, GV dash two zero dash zero six dash zero zero three one, five four eight Mohawk Street, and it looks like we are expecting uh, Barbie Coleman. Yes, I'm here. All right, Ms. Coleman, if you please raise your right hand. Tell the truth, the whole truth. Truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Barbie Coleman. Thank you. Honey. So, so this is a so painting the exterior of an already painted commercial building and adding signage. Uh, concrete block building is currently painted in a similar manner as proposed. Proposed uh, sign is approximately 18 square feet. Uh, the commission generally has only uh, allowed six square feet. Uh, the painted sign is on concrete block surface, so could be easily painted over. Um, as I said, the proposed sign is generally approved six square feet. Uh, staff recommends uh, for temporary signs are approved with a time limit. <laughs> Front door would uh, only have a logo without the frosted vinyl. The sign to be reduced in size. And also, there was a, a request to paint the um, it's sort of a, a plinth and uh, where you step up, it's not it's not painted at this time. You'll see on the photos, it's not painted. So is it okay to paint that uh, charcoal gray? All right, thank you, Connie. Uh, Want to make sure the record shows that Commissioner Steele is back from his recusal. Right. Uh, yeah, applicant. This, is, uh, this is David Troy. I'm, I'm the owner. I'm also on the line too. Oh, sure. If you please raise your right hand as well. Do you have a, a video camera with you? Well, I tried, but I couldn't get any sound, so I'm just on phone. Uh, I could try any input on a call in testimonials. If he's on, if he's able to get his video on, he can come on later. But until then, he can't give testimony. Okay. Apologize, Mr. 
uh, Ms. Coleman. Yes. Do you have anything anything to add to uh, to the application that as Connie has read it? I had a hard time um, understanding what Connie was saying about the signage. So if that could be repeated, that'd be great. Connie, can you repeat, please? Uh, generally, the commission has allowed six square feet for signage. Uh, this was 18 square feet. Um, so, you know, is, is this different because of, of the type of sign it is? Uh, that's a question that the commission will have to decide. Okay. Any questions, comments from the commission? Uh, this is Commissioner. I would say in this instance, and I haven't been in, on all those signs, but the nature of the sign painted on the wall and the proportionality of it with the, with the existing opening, with the fact that it's a pretty um, thin and not super blocky text. Does not seem un or inappropriate to me in this particular condition. It's just my opinion. Jay Panzer, I here's middle ground. Um, because there because there is an existing sign up there that already are, exceeds uh, the six feet that we would normally allow. I would. Um, not have a problem with a painted sign, the letters of which did not extend beyond the uh, the size of the current sign. To allow it to, to be made larger is something I've got a problem with. Um, it, it's not something we would normally allow anyway, um, but I think that there's a, a precedent. Basically, that it becomes kind of a, a replacement in kind with a slightly uh, a slightly better solution in terms of painting directly on the uh, on the building rather than on a piece of wood that's just nailed up. This is uh, Commissioner McCoy, and I think given that it's painted right on the block. I don't have a problem with the size. Um, I think it, uh, it it seems to me like it it makes a good composition in the size that it is. And if the letters are shrunk down to the old sign, I don't actually I don't think it will be as attractive as it is the way it's presented. What about precedent of it? Yeah, this is Commissioner Ferriel. I'm concerned about the precedent as well. Much easier if we're letting them put something that's substantially the same that's as something that's already there. And just for clarification, I think the precedent that would be set is that if you have a painted structure, then you can paint letters on the structure as you deem fit. And I think that's that's the concern we have moving forward coming out of this. I also agree that there is a larger sign than we would typically approve already in place. I think that would be the open door for a, a larger sign of that size. Um, looking at the image, it looks like there's some, uh, some blocking behind the sign that is mounted to currently and some blocking at the far end of the building. I'd be curious if, if the applicant wants to go for larger, if there is some photographic evidence that there was a larger sign there at one point in time. Yeah. And yeah. using that as a jumping off point to, to identify potentially. I think that's the only way that I personally could, could get a larger sign is that we could find evidence of a larger sign that took up that chunk of space that's shown by that blocking. Yeah, the, yeah, this is David Schroyer. There is that block there. So I, I'm sure there's gotta be- Mr. Schroyer, we can't take your yeah. testimony because you don't have a camera. So I, I apologize. Can I, can I try to log? Can I try to log in with it and, and see if you can see me? Yes, you can. Okay, I'll try. I'll start over. Okay. Right. Can, I, can I just comment on that while David tries to to uh, get his video going? Yes. That I I would agree with all of you, and that it does. I think it's a reasonable assumption that there was once at one point a larger sign there. Um, one challenge we have and why we decided to go in the direction we did 
was um, with the existing light, we didn't want to change the light or do anything. That larger sign and how we've spaced it in there helps you still have the ability to see the signage um, without being obstructed by the light. So we kind of went in between what those long bumps were with the existing wood sign. This is, this is Commissioner Foley. I just want to state, I, I think we have to be careful as the precedence of the sign is of a size. If we are pushing for a smaller size that is a but not as a appealing composition simply because we're afraid of precedence, we have to understand that this is a unique scenario and we're basing it on the composition of the existing conditions and we would review every applicant based on the composite, um, the composition of the existing conditions. And I don't want to end up with a worse sign simply not to set a precedence. I, I would agree to your comments there. However, we don't have evidence that a different sign would be worse. So I can't say that a different sign would be worse because I'm not presented with a different sign option currently. Fair enough. You have to see a smaller sign to sit to to be able to rule. Is it is it worse or not worse? But I, I agree with the comments, Commissioner Fulton. Uh, Mr. Schroeder, did you get your video? I think I saw your video. Yeah, the video was. I could see everybody, but I couldn't hear anything. So. I perhaps don't have a whole lot of relevance to add to it anyway. So, I mean, it. Okay. Um, any other comments from the commission? Uh, thoughts on size as currently shown? So, Anthony, I think that what you might be hinting towards is perhaps you'd like to see both options to make a decision. I would say that without without something a slam dunk um, to look at it against size wise, I, I can't say that a, a smaller version. I have to see an option that I could look at to, to really rule out that uh, that smaller option. And so the the question to the applicant would be: Would you be okay with continuing the signage portion of this application? Um, to, to see that, I mean, if that's what you'd like, I will absolutely do that. I just want to understand what you're asking for. So, if I was able to shrink Urban Sundry down to the same size as the Nature's Door, is that what you want to see in contrast to what I've proposed of the larger signage? Yes, I would say that that's what I'd be I personally be looking for to see what it looked like from a smaller perspective of the size that exists currently that we could compare it to to say that at that smaller smaller yet still larger than typical sign <clears throat> would not be um, appropriate at that location. So um can I also just clarify that so it's if it, when we're talking sign it's we're going to remove that wood board because it's rotten mm -hmm. and have it painted directly on the building. And that's everyone's okay with that. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Now, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't want to be kind of clear about this. Um, while I, while I do not disagree that that aesthetically or, or, you know, or, or from a design perspective that this makes sense, it's just blatantly, it blatantly goes against anything that we've approved within the historic district. So to me, the, the question is, if, that, if the smaller sign, if basically a replacement in kind, which is the way I'm looking at it, doesn't work, then the discussion should be back about, is there any reason we should allow a sign that's over six square feet? Because that's that's what gets approved. I mean, if this were if there were no sign there, and somebody wanted to put a sign on the building, we would be talking about six square feet. We wouldn't be talking about whether whether aesthetically, graphically, or proportionally, this makes more sense than a smaller sign. It appears to me that because this is painted on the building, that it's not in the same realm as a sign, a structured sign, 
and it would then fall under a different sort of category, which we don't have in the historical district, but it is present in the downtown commission area. You know, where you can actually have graphics on a building. I think graphics, I mean, I make a, I make a distinction between graphics and a sign. And there have been a couple of places where we've allowed certain things graphically within windows to exist, mm -hmm. uh, not on buildings, but this is a sign, whether it's painted on the building or whether it's whether it's on a board attached to the building, this is a sign. Um, if it were, were graphics, I, I think you're right, we'd be talking about the design of the building, which is a different, a different category altogether. Okay. Say that the guidelines for graphics in the German Village guidelines say style, size, scale, proportions, proportions, and design in relation to both the building and the surrounding environment. Signs and graphics are limited in limited in size, must have a ped pedestrian orientation, emphasize the area's residential character, and be compatible with architecture and character. The commission has. The commission has. And the precedent that has been set for that, first of all, there's a discussion about whether this would be pedestrian scale anyway, but the, the precedent that, that is set for that on all but the commercial thoroughfares within the district is six square feet. And that, I mean, that, that's what's been approved historically for, I mean, since before I was a commissioner, We've, we've understood that there are exceptions to be made on, on, um, uh, on, on commercial vehicular streets. We've made exceptions on Livingston. I think we've made an exception or two on Thurman and on um, Third as well. But even those are extremely rare. And what were those exceptions? Because this is Mohawk, those exceptions aren't relevant to this discussion. I don't mean to be flip about it. I, I don't, I mean, uh, a kitchen has a sign, I think, that is, that is like 10 square feet instead of six. Um, I think that. Um, Kitty's the, Cakes uh, on 3rd Street has a larger yeah. sign. I mean, there are. Grandfathered there, in. Well, and there are some certainly that are grandfathered in. And in fact, that's the way I'm looking at this one is it's grandfathered in. There's a sign we don't necessarily have a historical understanding of where that came from, but it's certainly been there as long as anybody can remember. And I, I don't think it's reasonable that we, you know, because it's been there, uh, re in effect, repainting a sign, whether it's on the board or directly on the building, I don't think it's, it's uh, I don't think it is, unreasonable for us to allow that and outside of, of our guidelines to allow it to simply be there, continue to be there. All right. And this is Troyer. Can I, can I just ask a question, not give testimony? Uh, is the current wood up there, that's more or less grandfathered in. So that could be painted and, and you could put a sign on that space. As it, for as my, it exists. For my I mean? way of thinking is, and and the the way I, the way I'm allowing myself to twist myself a little bit, is to say that the size of the signage that is currently on the building is what is grandfathered in, whether it's painted on a board or painted directly on the building. That it's the it's the size of the lettering that is is what's grandfathered in. And this is Commissioner Ferriel. I'd say if you wanted to replace the board and paint different words on the new board, that'd be just fine too. Sure. Okay. I, I'd rather and then the question the becomes. Coleman, go ahead. I'd rather remove the board and paint it directly on the sign. I ha I have no problem with that. I, I'm not. I'm one commissioner. I'm. <laughs> you know, I'm not speaking for the commission. It's just speaking for myself. Jay. Uh, yeah. It's worth for, this is Schroyer. If, if the board is removed and Barbie puts her sign on the wall and then there's a new tenant five years from now, will that same footage, that same space be available then 
because it's maintained its same size. We're getting into a discussion that goes yeah. beyond the application that's in front of us. Okay. Jay, I'd like to ask, and 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 this is more for my education as a newer member of the commission. Um, the precedence that was set for the six square feet is that in consideration of the buildings that are contributing um, for new new buildings for all buildings. What was the the logic to to that number? And is there ever a situation where that would the context would be different than the, than that precedence? And it looks like Connie's raising her hand to answer that. Yeah, Connie. I just wanted to say in consideration of all since these are limited to two hours in consideration of uh, other applicants, uh, which maybe we should continue this application because we're kind of getting into a philosophical discussion here. Well, I, I would agree, Connie. If we continue this conversation, I have to then wait a month to put signage on it. Is that correct? I'm, well, I'm, no, you have permission to use the current signage. If it's the current sign and I can put my signage on that current size of the sign that already exists, then I'm fine with that. Ms. Coleman, if you if you would like to amend your application to use the, the, the size that's existing there, we can vote on that and give you approval. Uh, if you would like to come back and submit a new application for a larger sign, you can go ahead and do that, but you can get the approval now for the existing sign, I believe, from the commission. Okay, I, I'd like to do that. Because okay. I would need to open my business. Right. So we have a an amendment from the applicants. Are there any other questions or comments on the commission? Jay, can you hear me? Or Anthony, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hey. Yeah, because I, I have been muted all this time and I've called in several times and this is an extremely frustrating process, to say the least. I don't experience this at work with other applications. That's my comment. Thank you, Ned. All right. Mr. Mr. Chair, I just want a point of order um, that uh, the revised sign uh, that the applicant is agreeing to actually going to be the size of the board and the board, it will be on the boards, even if they're new boards and not painted on the wall as they've been asking. No. The intent is the, the applicant wishes to paint it on the wall. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I, so that's different than what was said. So I wanted to make sure everyone's clear yeah. on what they're voting on. Yeah, so, so just for my two cents, I totally support the reuse of the existing sign board, but that's it. All right, there's no further questions. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number eight, GV, sorry, eight, yeah, GV 20060315538 Mohawk to approve the application as amended by the applicant um, to that the, the sign which can be painted on a, a replacement board or directly on the wall shall not exceed the size of the existing uh, lettering, lettered area of the existing sign. I'll second that. I'll make the comment that uh, I believe that it is a fact that it's a block structure um, that is already pre-painted is not newly painted is, is why I'd be considering it. All right. So uh, this, any, this is to allow painting this is to allow painting the sign on the block. On the block or on the board. Either or any other any other questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Uh, aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Nay. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes nay. Ayes have it. Application passes. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Commissioner Ferriel. I'm going to have to leave the meeting. I have a class at 
two-hour class that starts at six o'clock, and I need to spend at least five or ten minutes not staring at a computer screen. Thank you. Let the record show. Commissioner Ferial uh, is no longer in attendance. Moving on to G item number nine, GB-20-06-032. For Jaeger Street, uh, we are expecting Ms. Julia Bullock. Ms. Bullock, are you there? <laughs> yes, I'm here. Okay, fantastic. Please raise your right hand. Way to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Julia Bullock. Thank you. Connie? Um, so this has to do with uh, roof roofing work and a new uh, a new shape. Uh, the rear addition's roof was not installed properly, as evident photos are showing. The addition uh, needs to, well. Actually, the the original uh, request was was for a GAF elk grand slate shingle, which uh, is not on the approved list. Uh, I believe the applicant has changed that to GAF slate line. English. Is on the approved uh, list, so that's, that would not be an issue. Um, so upon removal of the non original shake siding that's on the house, the applicant will work with and repair, replace original siding as needed, uh, which uh, is typical for staff to work with the on this and has done that with this particular applicant also. I recommend approval. To preempt this, but Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. I apologize, I was muted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, agenda item number nine, GB 20060327440 Jaeger Street to approve it. Um, and I guess my question is, are we approving it as amended by the client? That's probably the, or by the applicant, that's probably the best way to put it, to utilize the, uh, um, the GAF slate line slate? Yes, we agree to that. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner McCoy. Commissioner McCoy. Thank you. Yes. Any questions on the motion? Uh, just as a point of order, I don't, I think because you were muted, you didn't ask Connie if there was any speaker slips. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> no, there, there was no speakers. No, no speaker slips. No speaker slips. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Foley. All right, any other questions or comments on the, on the any other questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the roll. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Commissioner, Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number 10. GB-20-06-025 Bravo, 133 Jackson Street. Mr. Believe Mr. Barrett, Mr. Lai, Ms. O, Mr. Burke, Magori, and Whitlow, any of the above? We're all here. You please raise your right hands. Do you tell us? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 All right. Yes. Mr. Lai and Ms. Ho, please state your names to the record. Yes. Yes. This is uh, Tim Lai and Liza Ho. Thank you. And Mr. Burke. Uh, yeah, this is Joel, Joel Burke. And Mr. Barrett. Here, Todd Barrett. All right. And Mr. McGorry and Ms. Mr. Whitlow. This is Ethan McGorry. 
Judge Whitlow. Okay. All are sworn in. Thank you. Uh, Connie, go ahead. Uh, okay, so this is a pretty big project. Uh, painting of the trim, the new gutters, the new windows, and roof repair have been staff approved, so that needs no discussion. The exterior brick walls and stone sills and lintels have been previously painted, so repainting can be appropriate. The side addition proposed for painting was built after 1951. It's not currently painted. Uh, soft, soffit down lighting is generally uh, considered a sur suburban feature and not really appropriate in historic districts. Need to discuss appropriateness of a new door opening in the historic brick rear addition. It will, it will not be visible from a public right of way. The proposed new skylight is on the rear slope of the roof. There's, there's also a significant landscape portion. And that also, was... yes, the, the landscape portion, yes. I did remind them of that. Okay. Does the applicant have anything to add? Uh, no, we're just here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, any speaker slips, Connie? No speaker slips. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? I think as we heard on, uh, or as we read on the staff report, the um, the soffit down lights are something that that uh, certainly cutting them in has has always been uh, frowned on. But even mounting them uh, at the underside, I, I've I've got a problem with as well. Um, and we did what we didn't see was a um, the lighting plan even to uh, clearly indicate the location of all of the fixtures. Oh, I did just. I agree with, yeah, I agree with Jay in that cutting them in is destructive of the historic fabric. Um, I have no problem with them being surface mounted up under the eave. That is almost a characteristic of German Village now. I have a question: uh, replacing existing skylight domes. Are we going back with domes, or are they going back with uh, a traditional skylight? As of now, we're proposing uh, the traditional dome, given that's how it's, it's currently built. Uh, the new skylight, however, that we're proposing would be the one listed uh, as you're showing there. Okay. Is the dome on the flat roof? Uh, there are two domes. There's one on the small um, entry piece on the lower roof, and then there is one on the very upper roof, uh, but is above the flat roof. In that case, I don't know whether Anthony was suggesting or requesting that they be flat, but we don't, we haven't approved dome skylights in forever. I was just asking for clarification if they were intending to replace like for like or if they're going to replace with something different. To the lighting question for a moment. Um, am I correct that the that only one, two, three, four, five lights on the front of the building are what's being um, in terms of the soffit lights? That only those five are being in, proposed. Uh, that is correct. And I, I guess I would add too. I think if if there was a desire for surface mounted, I don't think we'd have a problem with that. Mr. Chair, tr traditionally you've used ground lighting, not soffit lighting. No, not really. We we see it, but I, I'm totally on your side with this, Jamie. Uh, I I think it's inappropriate, but boy, they it it's been approved repeatedly. I, mean, I, 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 I don't like it, and I usually vote against it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I, I like the ground like better, too, also, when they're done well, but this is this is standard fare anymore. Uh, I would make a comment. Uh, the, the railing across the window. Typically, we don't approve those. Uh, I would say that in this condition, it's in the rear of the house, tucked 
find an addition adjacent to a, another structure that is pretty tight to it. That picture right there. I think any visibility is going to be minimal. I think how that attaches to the brick is going to be crucial. You want to hit the mortar joints, not the actual brick itself. For the record, that middle window is actually a small French door that's currently existing. And so currently it, it just falls out. So it's a safety piece as well. Yeah. Then I guess the, the big piece on there is creating a new door opening on the east wall of the rear porch. Right now it looks like there's a window currently in that location. Uh, so the uh, the proposal is to basically uh, fill in the current a single door on the far south with a window, and then to add a uh, single sided French door or single sided operable French door as shown, yes, in the image you have there. I see it now. So, comments from the commission regarding cutting a new opening? Not in historic fabric. We, uh, there's just a point of clarification too. What we intend to do is is use a, a door that is uh, obviously an oversized door to match the, um, as the client said, the existing smaller French doors that are adjacent uh, to try to keep the alignments and obviously materiality uh, the same with, with the header as well. If it were anywhere else, I would meet. Oh, Commissioner Thiel, go ahead. I just don't think it's appropriate to be cutting that size of an opening in a solid brick wall that appears to be historic material. Um, we have a hard enough time when people take historic window openings and convert them to doors and vice versa, much less cutting a huge hole. And Commissioner Panzer. Uh, if it were anywhere else on this building, I would agree with Ned. That that's that this is the one location on this building where I have not a lot of Thanks about it. And you know, Jay, I agree with you about that. It's not visible, but I still think it's you have to maintain the integrity of the original historic structure and and what was there. And I think visible or not visible, I don't think we should be uh, permitting it. So, can I ask for a clarification? What what are you guys considering historic fabric? Because this is not original to the house. That is an addition. The original house was a duplex square building and this we have pictures between 1950 and this looks like it was converted from the duplex in the 1970s and so that back addition is not original to the home there's actually the arched windows is what makes it curious above those two windows so above like where that downspout comes out there was actually you can see a bricked up window that was the original the original window of the home and that addition not part of the original structure. So when do you think this dates from? We're we're assuming 1970s when it was converted from the duplex. We we went it to doesn't the doesn't match the addition out the side, doesn't it? It does match the vestibule, doesn't it? It does. So I I granted I probably is not historic. Okay. Yep, it matches the uh, the vestibule addition out to the uh, to the west. I agree. Good point. Thank you, gentlemen. Are there any other questions or comments on the application? Tony, did you have a comment? No, he 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 said what I was going to say. The windows are from the approved list, correct? They are, and uh, they had submitted documentation that the, all of the windows had been uh, replaced previously. Progress. We didn't have to go look at them. Mr. Chairman, I have an application on agenda item number 10, application GV 20 06 025 B 133 Jackson Street to approve as amended by the applicant um, that the five, five, uh, down, soffit down lights be surface mounted and their wire waves be surface mounted. 
uh, rather than recess. Second. Uh, before we, we push forward, uh, Commissioner McCoy, any comments on the landscaping? No, I think the landscaping is fine. I mean, we're actually getting more trees in the village with this. Okay. Design. That's what makes sure. Just make sure we address this since it wasn't talked about earlier. Thank you. All right. Any questions on the motion? Was there a second? Wait, I have one question. Um, the skylight will be flat and not dome. The new the new skylight is proposed as flat, yes. But we we're proposing in kind replacement for the existing two. As domed for clarity. The domes are like for like the new sky to be flat. Correct. To your question, Mr. Panzer, Commissioner Panzer, I believe Commissioner Thiel seconded. Am I correct on that? Correct. Correct. Any other questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the roll call. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes ayes well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Connie, we, we hit six. What's the what's our guidance? We can continue at your discretion. Uh, commissioners, any any issue with uh, continuing? A, a lack of statement will be a yes. We're good to go. All right, we'll go ahead and continue. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 11, GV-20-06-033, 907 South 3rd Street. We're expecting Dan Custer from Finish Line Building. Yes. All right. Mr. Custer, if you would please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Dan Custer. Thank you. Connie. It also is a, a landscape hardscape application. The proposed work in general is consistent with German Village guidelines. The new pergola is proposed at 10 uh, feet high, uh, uh, so cannot be staff approved. Uh, the 10 foot high is proposed to match the height of an existing flat roofed addition on a neighboring property. I believe that's to uh, provide some uh, screening. I'm not sure what that was. Sound like a cuckoo clock. Um, for several years, the commission, it, yeah. the commission has avoided approving new brick walls with wrought iron fence inserts. However, it is an existing condition at this property. Recommend approval with discussion of the 10 I'm foot hot. Uh, Thank you, Connie. Applicant, do you have anything to add? I just want to make uh, clear the way the the second or the the added iron fence is actually midway back in the courtyard. I don't know if that's clear or not from the the I guess the text on the document here. That's yeah. where the uh, uh, on the uh, site plan shown that way back where the bump out of the house. Okay. Across, you know, about, but it's actually in it's, only in it's only in like a limestone transition because there's an elevation change there from the back to the front of the courtyard. Sorry, I just got a little confused now. The plain wrought iron fence is halfway back. But you're proposing yeah, so, to go ahead. Uh, the the uh, we were proposing the existing wrought iron fence and brick wall we're not doing anything with. That's staying as is. Okay. The proposed with is that plain wrought iron fence further back where you see that transition to the right of the chair there. There's about a six inch transition of height for the patios. And we were, and it's a current kind of a, I guess, a spatial division, I guess, between the kind of the private in the back and the public in the front for the, the homeowner. The pergola has a roof. Yes, it's a solid roof. Uh, it's a metal okay, roof, so actually. Yeah, pergolas do not have roof. Shelters do. As a point of clarification. I realize that. 
<laughs> just got done building one with Teresa. I'll tell you that's a pavilion. <laughs> there we go. Terminology. Can Fair. this be built within three feet of the property line? Anybody? Probably not. I'm not sure. I gone to the building department with us. Well, we we went through the process back in February with the submission of the uh, oh shoot, um, it's Andrew, the liaison for German Village. So I haven't talked to the building department yet. And yeah. at that point, I proposed on this. There was, for my information so far, it wasn't opposed to having something where it was located. I have not asked the building department though. Did they consider that 60 foot to, to, uh, tall brick wall a firewall? Good question. I don't know. I can't answer that. I mean, that, that may be what's getting you through. Well, no, I haven't asked the building department yet that question. We were going through this whole process first, and we kind of got stalled back with the virus and accelerated with mm -hmm. the new meeting. We Here we are. <laughs> yeah, but Jay, is your point that if that wall has to move, we may have to reconsider some things? Yeah. Different. I mean, where it's shown, there's, and I'm, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it or disagree with it, but there's kind of some rationale. But if it needed to move three feet to the right, um, but they would have to come back at that time if the building department told them that. Correct. That's correct. So you're talking about the structure itself or the, the wall? You're not about the existing wall. Structure itself. My question is, can you build that? Can you build that kind of a roof within three feet of the property line? And the wall is at the property line, correct? It appears to be, yes. Yeah. So and the wall is how tall? 60 inches, five feet. So it's a five foot, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I should have thought about 60 feet. That's not right. Yeah, it's a five, it's a five foot wall and the, and the, per, uh, the roof is at 10 feet. So that isn't gonna. I don't think it's gonna fly, but that's their issue. So aside, aside from the pergola, um, the cherry tree that's being removed due to the pergola, correct? Or is there a, is there a issue with the cherry tree that needs to be taken down? Uh, we submitted a review from Davy Tree about the uh, health of the tree. Oh, you did um, that, of an age where its limbs are been deteriorating, been cutting off one by one, and now there's like three limbs left on the tree itself. Leafing cherries are ornamentals anyway, so I mean, Karen, I guess that's a that's a Karen McCoy question. Um, they have a they have a shorter lifespan lifespan, and that one's reached its lifespan and you know is in decline. So, okay. I'm gonna try to identify what if we have anything on here that's a showstopper. If we kind of treat the pergola, the the the, pat, the pavilion, whatever term you want to use. Treat that as an entity. Is there anything else on this application that's uh, problematic? Um, let's see if we can get a, a, some kind of avenue forward. So, if, so for the commission, the question is: If all these items, if they can get past code, do you have any heartache with as submitted? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Go ahead, make your motion. 
Agenda item number J Panzer. Agenda item number eleven GV twenty dash oh six dash oh three three nine oh seven South Third Street to approve as submitted with the note that the building department needs to chime in on the location of the pergola, what's described as the pergola. And if it needs to be relocated in any way, that they need to come back to us prior to construction. For clarification, that's construction of any work on the application, correct? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. All right, we have a second from Commissioner Thiel. Any questions on the motion? We'll take a roll call. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion passes. Applicant, please uh, follow up with, with Connie uh, with the uh, code sucks. So that's so as approved right now, we can't start any of the landscaping until we get the pergola approved. If the pergola the patios, that's that's how we voted on it. If the pergola changes the landscaping plan, then that's some problem. That's problematic. Okay. Um, if you want, we can okay. try to the, re vote on it. The brick <laughs> isn't okay. through city. I'm sorry, I heard you hear that. That we can we can identify items that can be approved regardless of the um, pavilion if you'd like we can take a revote on that specifically break it apart well it wouldn't that be wouldn't that work be under staff approved anyway okay so your your clarification on your on the uh motion jay was that no work to proceed i'm so per pergola is approved I'm okay. sorry, yes, I think I may yes. not have, I think you may have broken up, but I did not, I, I, I don't have a problem with any work going ahead with an under, the understanding that the, that if anything, if the pergola needs to move, they need to come back to us about the pergola. All right, let's uh, apologize. a, a re-vote uh, with the clarification that all of the work can proceed regardless of pergola approval. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second on that motion? Second. All right, we have a first and second. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Thirst. Aye. Steele. Aye. McCoy. Aye. Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion passes. So there you go. You can proceed with the other work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, any objection from the commission to moving on to item number 12? No objections. Item number 12, GV 20 06 034. This is conceptual 245 Lansing Street. Uh, I believe we are. Expecting Mark Hours, as well as John Opfer and Nancy Banks. Mr. Chairman, I'm here. All right, please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Please state your names for the record. John Upfer. Nancy Banks. Mark Hours, Mode Architects, representing the homeowner. Thank you very much, Connie. Um, so this is for a conceptual review of a new carriage house and a request for the variances and associated association with the very the carriage house. Um, I think that they would like to have a, um, a action taken on the variances if possible. Um, as currently proposed, the garage with living space is significantly taller and has a larger footprint than typical for the neighborhood. Architectural cues drawn from the existing house are not apparent. Uh, though a, a modern design may be appropriate. Uh, applicant requests actions on the variance, on the variance package. Uh, staff recommends providing comments only until the design is more clearly defined. Thank you, Connie. Uh, applicants, anything to add? Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, I would recommend that we look at the uh, conceptual design for the carriage house and then review the five variances that are required. And I can explain uh, uh, those. Connie is correct. We would like action on the variances tonight. And we're here to solicit feedback about the design of the proposed carriage house so that we can return at a later date for approval. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission regarding the conceptual design of the carriage house. Commissioner Thiel, I'll go to you first. I'm sorry, I had to take a work related uh, phone call and I got to call up with another one. Um, you're asking me to comment on the design? Yes. Uh, totally inappropriate, disruptive, and against um, uh, Chapter 3116, Historic Preservation Architecture Review 3116.014, letters G, H, and I. Thank you. Commissioner Durst. It's really cool, but I'm concerned that it's kind of overwhelming its neighbors. Commissioner Foley. I'm having flashbacks of thinking about how many of the new uh, <laughs> construction guidelines we should vary uh, from a recent conversation about a recent hotel project. Um, I'd, I'd love to see, um, I mean, the scale is, seems a bit larger, obviously from the elevation drawings that are provided. Uh, however, you know, on that application for the hotel, we spent a lot of time trying to get, um, an understanding of renderings in context. I think that would be helpful for us to determine scale on this particular application um you know um it is obviously varying in style in materials um but i think that um trying to see it in context would help me a ton in, in trying to assess uh whether or not the variation is appropriate it is obviously very different temporary um i i just don't have enough information i guess to to assess that in my mind Commissioner McCoy. I, I don't object to the design of the garage. Um, I do feel like it feels large. It feels tall. And I don't know if there's any way to reduce that in scale because it does seem to me like it will be obvious on that alley and in that condition. Commissioner Panzer. First, let me say that I want one. <laughs> yeah. Because I think it really, I, I think it's a, a really attractive design. Um, but I can't, the, I can't get past the mass of it. And I, I'm looking at the, um, the alley side perspective. Um, and it, it, it I think what what Brent was saying, really, yeah, that's the, the one I'm looking at. I think what Brent was saying, um, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but looking at it, and and it's always the case of looking at something in pure elevation is is kind of the least flattering view, almost always, and certainly in terms of evaluating the mass. But even when you um, look at the alley side perspective, it's just got a ton of mass to it. Um, it has got a weight to it that none of the structures, it's got a visual weight to it that none of the structures on that block um, have. And, and I, I think the one thing, I, I, I was really uh, very jarred by it when looking at the garages that are adjacent to it. Now I, now I look at what's on the other side of the alley and, and seeing that we've got houses that are kind of in that height. 
And I read through the the require or the requested variances, and I'm kind of going, you know, I'm not sure I really have a problem with any of these variances. I think I just have a problem with the the mass of the design that the variances are leading to. I, I'm having trouble getting my arms around it for that reason. As I said, I really like it. And, uh, I'll I'll echo Jay's comments. I think it's a fantastic design from a standalone design standpoint. Um, my my concern, like Jay mentioned, is is compared. If you look at the alleyscape elevation on A8, uh, it's taller than both the adjacent structures. Um, and I understand that it's it's a carriage house, so you're going to have to have a little extra space. I think it's the my, one of my heartburns harkens back to previous conversations we've had about um, carriage houses, uh, but more on the traditional carriage house where we have the top heavy nature of the structure when they try to make things too tall compared to the door openings. Um, I think it's a similar proportionality thing here. Um, so you had the overall mass, you have the proportionality of the door height versus the, the roof height compared. And then when you compare this to the, the houses across the street, um, you're roughly at the, the top of window, if not um, gutter height of the houses across the street. And now you're competing uh, a, a auxiliary structure against a primary structure, two of them across the street. So. I think scale massing is the is the issue at play, and you can try to work your magic mark, but with this design style, I find it hard to to figure out how you're going to get there. But I won't say you can't. Well, Mr. Chairman, if if I may, I, I think the alley scape elevation is a bit of a false narrative. I mean, this this is a residential alley. It's an unnamed residential alley. Uh, it's quite narrow. The, the residences that back up to this property are actually half addresses off of Whittier. And I would be happy to put the model in context for you. I think the, the carriage house as proposed is subservient to the existing residences, particularly the one directly to the south. And I think it's unfair for someone trying to build a carriage house to be penalized by the small nature of the uh, single story garage that happens to be next to them. I think the scale, when you judge it in comparison to their current Italianate and with the structure directly to the south of them, I think it nestles in and remains subserving it to both spring lines of both roofs. Those two homes that are shown on that graphic, the one in the middle and then the one to the east, are quite tall. You know, when we reviewed uh, a similar type application recently, you know, we asked them to also provide the height of all those adjacent structures mm -hmm. um, because the the new construction guidelines ask for that. So Mark, that would be helpful as well. I'd be happy to include maybe ghosting in the profile of the elevation on the opposite side of the alley for you to judge the to judge the height. I know that um, you know you're maximizing the floor plan on the second floor but when i look at the elevation that faces the yard and it has a little bit of push pull and it may be that it's be it's because of the balcony that overhangs but it's not um you know the the surface is eroded a bit it moves in and out and the one that's on the garage is on the alley side is just so flat you know, there's so much mass there. I don't know. Is there any way to set back panels a little bit or do something so that it's. Well, I, I, I think the stepping in the massing and the layering that you're here referring to uh, that was intentional on the yard mm -hmm. side. We're, we're trying to spend our money on the view that the homeowners are actually going to get to appreciate. Um, yeah. I, I understand your comment about mm -hmm. it being quite vertical, but I don't think it's any more vertical than the house that's across the street. Or across the alley, rather. Yeah, uh, Mark, across the alley. Mark, to your earlier point, this is a residential alley and there are houses across the street, so the uh, the alley side does become a little bit important in that regard. And I think, I think over time, I think those garages, particularly the really diminutive one to the west, I mean, if you look at the quality of it, it's it's not going to be there long. The one to the east of this has been has been renovated recently. I suspect that it will stay, but it has a very tall 
uh, attic. And I believe the property, even one over to the east of this, has been recently remodeled as well. This this block is transitioning of the essence. So yeah, I think that those photos do a good job of describing. I think I'd hate to see that us have to be challenged with the context of the garage to the left when I, I have to believe that it, it's not going to make it another 20 years. Mark, you might uh, tell us like what the average height is. As Brent said, when we were doing that hotel application, that's what came up quite a bit is what is the average height of the buildings in the area. And the average height of structures on this block, is that what you're asking for, Teresa? Right. And, and the new additions, new elements not to exceed that. Yeah, sure. I, mean, I think we'd be happy to model the, the rest of the massing of the, of the context for you and, and let you see what it would be like to look down that, that unmanned alley or unnamed alley and, and see how it relates, particularly to the residences on the other side. I'm also happy to create more orthographic drawings for you to, to judge. The, uh, the verticality of that particular plane. We're even happy to maybe even look at if there's a way for us to break that plane. Um, I, I understand the comments. That, that being said, do people have, and I go back to having read the, um, the variance requests and I'm not seeing anything in the variance requests that are not things that we very traditionally approve. Thank, thank you for that, Commissioner Panzer. If, if I could, there, there are five variances being requested, and three of those are related to the non-conformance of the existing primary structure. The other two are generically related to the carriage house. They don't, they don't in any way inform the design you're seeing today, i.e. I'm not asking for any variances based on the size of it. I'm not asking for any specific variances based on the height of it all. My variance to exceed 15 heat feet does include my 23 feet, which is my my maximum height. So uh, I'd be happy to walk you through these five if that would be helpful. But it, it is important to know. I don't I don't think that the dialogue today about the design in any way, shape, or form affects the five variances that would be needed to accomplish this project. I, what's the fifth? I mean, I'm looking at. I'm looking at this page here and I'm I'm seeing four. Yeah, I, I, I had to, I amended our variance requests. Uh, I'm not sure if Connie has the most current one that I sent her available. Jay, it's on the most recent link to the agenda that Connie sent this earlier today. Oh, crap. It's, all, it's also on your staff report. You have staff report. Okay, that, that'll work. Would you Could like you me to quickly summarize them? I would say you can skip the three that are already existing um, condition and then. I, I, I do want to clarify that one of the ones related to the existing condition is related to that stoop that's proposed in the site plan that's on the screen. You'll see there's a three foot six dimension provided to the western property line and it says new rear stoop. I, I think it's slightly ridiculous that a stoop that doesn't have any roof is considered affecting the side yard of a primary structure, but because we want that stoop to align with the new carriage house. They asked that I that I include the, the minimum side yard not being met. We weren't going to meet it anyway because of the other property line. But I do want to be transparent that there is a stoop there that is driving one of these three, but they, they are all related to the house. So the, the front building line of the house is not set back far enough. The east building line of the house is not set back far enough. And the total side yards will not be enough if I let that stoop, which is just a two step platform slide past the existing non-conforming plane of the house. The other two variances are, are the generic variances related to a carriage house, it's having habitable space above a garage and being allowed to exceed the 15 feet. Uh, so you do, you would want approval on the recommendation for the variances, correct? I would very much appreciate a, a action on the recommendation for the variances. We do have an active uh, council variance. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Before I make the motion, what's the council variance going through right now? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I don't understand the question. You said you had an active council variance. Or is that just yes. for these? This, that, correct. That is for these. This is not a B. I, just to clarify, I'm, I'm sure you all are well aware of this, that once there's habitable space above a garage, 
these are no longer BZA variances, these are council variances. So this, this is a council variance application. Uh, I'm trying to conform the existing non-conforming principle structure as well as acquire the habitable space above the garage that is a council variance process now. Just wanted to clarify. One more time, uh, agenda item, motion on agenda item number 12, uh, GV 200634 to recommend approval of variances to section 3332.21, 33.32.25, 33.32.38G, 33.38, sorry, 33.32.38H, and 33.32.26. Your second on the motion. Foley will second. Mr. Foley, thank you. Any questions on the motion? To the roll call, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Recommendation is made. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate the feedback, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Good seeing you. Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to excuse myself. Okay. Um, good luck with the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, commissioners, any issues moving on to agenda on number 13? Out of respect for the city stance time, any issues moving on to item number 13? Um, if we don't complete them, they will be stacked on to next month and the meeting will be even longer. So let's keep going. Okay. I just want to be, be uh, <laughs> I want to be uh, sensitive to your guys' time as well as the commission. Right on, Connie. I like your attitude. <laughs> That's not saying I'm not exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, item number 13, GV-20-06-035-767 South 3rd Street. Uh, we're expecting uh, Ms. Julia Bullock. Juliet, you still there? I'm here. All right, let the record show that Ms. Bullock is still on the record from previous. I'm gonna get my dog out of here. <laughs> Sorry. Good, good dog. Good dog. <laughs> All right, Connie, go ahead. This also is a request for a variance recommendation. This is a renewal of previously approved variances. At the time of approval, use as a laundry was specified. No modifications to the previously approved variances are proposed, with exception of parking calculations based on the modified use from laundromat to retail use and amendments, revisions to the current zoning code. You can see the statement of, of uh, hardship for clarification on that, and I'm sure Bullock can uh, clarify all the Recommend rec positive recommendation. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Ms. Bullock, anything to add? Yeah, so I just like to explain this is actually not a change of use. A laundry room is also retail, or laundromat is considered retail use. The only reason we have to get a variance for this is because on the site plan that was submitted last time and in some of the text that was submitted, though not in the original variances, it called out for a laundromat. So that's why we have to get this variance because it's it's laundromat is considered retail use. Um, Basically, my client doesn't want to be running a laundromat anymore. There's so many additional requirements, you know, with the COVID and the cleaning. Um, and also, uh, you know, her business has really changed her business model. Uh, she has a lot more home deliveries, of course, with the COVID issues, but in, just in general. Um, and so this use, we believe, will be a much less intensive use. There will be... Um, you know, most of her retail clients are walk-in or it's home delivery and they pull up to the loading zone. Um, whereas laundromat, there can be anywhere from, you know, three to nine people in there at one time. And they're mostly driving to the laundromat and parking in the neighborhood. Um, there is a parking lot behind here that can be utilized by the retail clients. There's usually only ever two or three cars in there. 
Um, there is some residential above this, but um, all of her residential clients have um, parking off site, either through garages or in the surface parking lot. Um, we're also expanding the office space and doing ADA restrooms, which is taking away some of the existing retail space. So the proposed area for the laundromat is just gonna let her have a staging area for deliveries, have to have less deliveries per week, and also is gonna give her a place to kind of stage for the, um, when people pull up to the loading zone for their um, pickup orders. She's just really kind of out of space in terms of the, the functional aspects of her business. So that's why we're asking for these um, change to the getting rid of the laundromat. Thank you. Connie, any uh, speaker slips? No speaker slips. Thank you. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission? Any, any issue with run down these uh, parking reduction? Any problems with parking re reduction? We'll say the variances that were previously proved, approved actually had um, a requirement for more of a reduction in parking than this one does. And that's primarily due to how they calculate parking now versus back then. And it may be even a little bit of an area error on the last application actually. Well, under the under the current state, what's uh, what's the parking requirement? Um, the so they at zero now with the current state? Yeah, I mean it, before, when it was approved last time, we asked for a 24 parking space variance with zero on site, and it now it's 20 with zero on site. Okay. So if she doesn't have parking on site. She does have parking, but you know we can't count that in our you know required parking. Excuse me. Part of the Excuse problem. me. Can you hear me? This is uh, Tim. Bip this is Tim. Uh, Mr. Bibler, did you submit a speaker slip? Yes, I did that Sunday and repeated it today. Connie, do we have that speaker slip request? I don't know where it was sent. I didn't. I, I emailed it to the uh, email address that was stated in your um, in your instructions, the uh, German Village Commission email. I would have <clears throat> I would have to check. Um, right. Connie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take. I'll swear them in and take a uh, a statement. Is that okay? I'm fine with it. Okay. All right, Mr. Bill, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, you have three minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I am speaking in opposition to this agenda item. In 2013, the German Village Commission voted to disprove the variance proposed proposal that is cited in this current variance request. Documentation attached to this application includes the 2013 city document, the 2013 city document that approved the applicant's 2013 variance for this building. The primary reason stated by the city granting approval for this variance was, and I quote, the main impact of this development would be on parking in the neighborhood. But because the applicant owns an 18 space parking lot on the adjacent parcel to the north for use by the commercial patrons, that impact is substantially reduced. Unquote. The 18 space parking lot referenced by the city does not exist. This past week, I went to this adjacent parcel to the north, and in this space, I counted seven marked parking spaces and 10 trash and recycle bins. Also, the entrance to this space off city park does not have any signage to inform the public that there is parking available for the applicant's retail business. This would explain why only the tenants, tenants park in this space. The reason the trash and recycle bins for this building are in this space is, or excuse me, in this space is because there is no other place to put them. Even if they could permanently be removed, it may be possible to add only two additional parking spaces. In any event, it is not possible for this space to continue anywhere close to 18 parking spaces. 
they are required to have at least 20 off-street parking spaces. Also, allowing the current retail eating drinking space to expand into the laundry mat space results in potentially creating a combined space for a much larger eating drinking only space. In this agenda item, it states no expansion of the existing eating drinking establishment is proposed. If these variances are approved, is there anything to prohibit the current owners or future owners to convert the current wine bar retail and laundry mat space into one large wine bar eating space without gaining approval for additional variances? Each commission member is aware that any promises made today about parking and future use of the building space cannot be enforced. That is evident by the 2013 promise to provide 18 off-street parking spaces. It is for these concerns and reasons that I oppose this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bibler. So for, try to break this down mathematically here. So Juliet, uh, under the current situation, we have the the, uh, the wine shop, which has what square footage? Currently, Currently the wine shop has a, um, a square footage of 2687, and the accessory eating has 569. If you look in my statement of hardship, it has all these calculations. Um, here's what I would say. Um, there is additional parking across the street, which I outlined in my uh, statement of hardship. There is uh, garage spaces across third, and all of her residential clients actually park in those either in garages or on surface parking spaces because my client owns all those properties. So the the 18 spaces was not all in the, the parking lot behind, and it never was. I think they probably just commented it that way. I'm not sure. Um, so we do have the additional parking spaces that are required. They're just not all in that lot. She can move her bins and the recycling. She has plenty of room. There's um, yard space back behind there. So that's not really an e issue either. And to answer Mr. Bibler's question, we very specifically stated in our variance and statement of hardship that we are not expanding the eating and drinking area at all. It will stay the same size. So therefore, and it's in, you know, as part of the use and parking calculations as well. Therefore, should that area be amended then um, or want to be expanded, we would have to go back and ask for additional variances. It would, you know, affect parking calculations and all that kind of thing. So we would not be able to expand it without coming back. I guess my other comment would be, you know, the laundromat generates a lot more traffic and cars than our proposed use of, you know, for the additional office, restroom, and retail space. You know, anywhere from six to nine people in there at a time, and most of them are driving up. So I, I feel like this proposal is actually going to lessen the parking load in this area. It's also going to allow my client you know, to have a more functional business. So I do feel like it um, actually will be less impactful for the neighborhood. And I just want to assure him that, you know, we're not proposing to expand the eating and drinking space at all. This is, you know, functional space for storage, for deliveries, for staging deliveries, um, as was shown on the site plan that I submitted. And Julia, I think you said this before, I just want to have it restated for clarification. The parking requirements for a laundry are this it's the same for the retail or is it a different it's the same for the retail and it's the same for the laundry so the parking requirements are actually exactly the same yep. however you know we also look at functionally how many parking spaces do they use now the parking requirements for the eating accessory eating and drinking area has a greater requirement instead of dividing by 250 you divide by 175. So any expansion of the eating drinking area, which we can't do anyways, because it's precluded, would require a change to the parking variance. Okay. 
So make sure we have that all clarified. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Um, I would just like to Thank note. Oh, go ahead. No, my, my only comment is, is, is Mr. Bugler has brought up an issue that I, I think for me to vote for this, I would have to understand what the precedent was of previous variances that this is relying on. So, Ned, you're saying you don't understand or it's not clear what the previous parking considerations were when the variance was granted, correct? Yeah, yeah, I I think I need more understanding of that before I would, would go ahead with this. Well, I that's mean, my opinion. Part of the issue is that um, the way the city calculated variances back then versus the way they do now was different. So it's not an apples to apples. But ultimately, what was requested by the city last time was 24 spaces. And now what's requested is 20 spaces. So, um, but I, I still like, I'd still like to understand the, the history there. Well, I did submit before and that you're basing it on now. Well, I did submit I understand things change, right? I still like to understand that logic and what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did submit the previous application that had the list of how the, um, the previous applicant, you know, the attorney did her parking calculations and it's in the package that you did receive. Last two pages of your application. Mm -hmm. She has um, six garages on Columbus and six behind 760 or three behind 764 South mm -hmm. Third Street. They're also owned by the applicant for her residential tenants. So parking really That's has part of been the an issue here. They, they get use of those as part of their rent. Yes. Or do they have to rent them separate? No, it's part of their rent. We also have no problem putting additional signage, um, telling people, you know, where they can park. But like I said, it really hasn't been an issue because most of her business for the, oops, oh, what happened here? I lost. I, mean, I, I, I go back to, to one of the things that you said earlier on, and that is that, isn't this really, uh, isn't this kind of a pro forma application? It's not really changing use. I, I mean, from a technical perspective, it's not changing use of anything. That's yes, that's my. In fact, I was actually surprised and did argue the point quite profusely for a while that we even needed to go back and redo these variances. And if you look at the list of variances, the majority of them are for, for some reason, I keep getting kicked out of uh, the existing building. So if I could, because I used to live about a block from here and it's not, I don't anymore, uh, but it's named in their, her statement of hardship that the um, eating and drinking establishment is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I believe that's still the correct, correct. Is that correct, Julia? Yeah, that's correct. And the use of um, the carryout and the use of the, um, of the laundromat would either be uh, presumptively the same or actually to to the point less. I mean, there's there's a lot of frequency of people in and out with the laundromat. So to Jay, your point, I, I do believe that from my experience, this is not a change at all. As long as the uh, re the restaurant portion does not expand into the new space and we have to go on the application that's in front of us. And if we're if a, a citizen were to see something other, they have a they can they have a duty to call 311 or whatever they want to do to file a complaint, but um, based on the application as it's presented, I don't see a change. If you run down the app, the uh, variances, variance one is, is the parking. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all existing conditions, it looks like. Yes, they are for the existing building. The only only thing that would be at potentially something we discuss is one parking. But mm -hmm. as as Brent stated, and as I, I'm of the belief, there's real no change here, especially if we're not expanding the dining. 
area. And my client did also voluntarily sign a good neighbor agreement, which is still in effect. So just talking about the hours and you know how the business is going to work with the neighborhood. So I mean the statement of hardship explaining the calculation and specifically the size of the accessory eating and drinking area is part of the application part of the, the council variance application process. So yes, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. We cannot expand it without additional variances. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Go ahead, Mr. Panzer. And item number 13, BV 2006-035-767 South 3rd Street to approve as submit or to, to recommend the variances as submitted. Is there a second? McCoy, second. Thank you, Commissioner McCoy. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Uh, run the roll call. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Uh, Applications recommended. Thank you. And I appreciate you guys extending the meeting time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have two. Mr. Chair, I have you got my vote as a you got my vote as a buy, right? Not a not an I. What was that again, Mr. Steele? I did not I did not vote I. I voted by. I, I, I passed on it. Oh, staining. Is that correct, Ned? That would be correct. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I a point of order. Yes. Um, the alert that I got a few minutes ago was the city of Columbus saying that downtown streets are going to be closed this evening. I just want to make sure that nobody is going to be trapped in their offices. Okay, that was the point. I'm trapped in my office I've had for the last two months, which is my well, dining yeah, room. Yeah, in, in down, <laughs> don't want to make sure nobody's trapped downtown. Also, can I just check to make sure that Alex Sowersmith and Christopher Lohr can still stay? That was be my next point. So it actually starts at 6.30 tonight. It does. So, yes. Yeah, due to protests, all downtown streets are closed to non-emergency traffic at 6.30 p.m. But the curfew is still 10, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, that, that was all. Pretty wise. So Alex and Christopher, with, with two applications left, do you have the ability to stay on? If not, understand. I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's, yesterday, they were allowing cars out not in and so as long as you were leaving downtown it was okay so I, i'm expecting to be okay just tell them commissioner harkey said it's okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <I'll> definitely keep you <laughs> we'll move on so these last two are conceptuals uh so number 14 uh, gv-20-06-036 conceptual for 787 south 6th street and looks like we are expecting Stephen and Belinda Cuff. Yes. Hi, can you see me and hear me? Yes, you both raise your right hands, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, all truth, nothing but the truth? We do. And Stephen, please state your name for the record. Stephen Cuff. And Belinda, please state your name for the record. Belinda Mills Cuff. Thank you very much. Connie? Okay, so this is uh, for a new, uh, to modify an existing connector by putting a, a second story on it. Uh, three variations are pro proposed, options one, two, and three. Uh, second story connectors have generally not, generally not been supported by HPO staff or the commission. Among options provided, option one may be at least intrusive if the ridge is lowered and matching slate installed. Provide comments, it's conceptual. Thank you very much. Uh, applicants, do you have anything else to add? Sure. So we're basically trying to connect a space above our kitchen to our bedroom to create a nursery. 
um, we're having a baby in next month. So we're on a pretty tight timeline. So we really appreciate you guys staying uh, late to hear us. But we want to, you know, before we invest more time and money, we just wanted to see if this is something that at all is feasible. Um, you know, we're happy to, to do what we can to make the connection. Um, from our understanding, we want the roof of the connector to be lower. So we would just ask if there's a an amount that it needs to be lower. It's only 6'8 at its peak right now, and I'm 6'4, so to bring it down too much, we're afraid it may not be functional. Uh, so we were hoping to get some guidance on that. Uh, and, and also, it looks like um, option one was what was favored uh, by the commission. Um, so maybe just a little more feedback on that, because in reading the guidelines, it said the most open and simple design uh, resembling an enclosed porch or garden structure is favored. But to me, at least, that looks a little bit more closed than the other. So if we could just maybe get some guidance on that would be great. Thank you. Uh, two points. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Good luck. Um, and the second piece, uh, commission has not expressed a, a preference. That was uh, HPO. Just for the record, it's okay. fine. It's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, questions coming from the commission. I'm sorry. Um, it's like minimally visible too from the public eye on the road too. I know it's kind of hard to tell by the pictures, but um, you can barely see it walking past. So, I know you guys. That's what I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out what we're looking at in these photographs. So there's one that is. There's one where we're seeing one side that looks like there's an awning. Yes. Is that on the yard side or the street side? Um, neither. Um, so they're yes, both. I like that. Neither. Yeah. So uh, there should have been a picture. I don't see it um, in here, but one of the pictures I submitted was from the street. So the awning you're looking at is actually um, from the side of the house and then you know the other side of the house the other neighbor there's another picture from there but the the front of the house would be the right on the right so basically from this view we're looking at the street is is out to the right okay let let me and and then on the bot the next picture so the brick the brick structure is towards the street the clavered structure is towards the back correct okay i that makes obviously the the brick structure is the original house uh, we just discovered a space above the kitchen that was closed off at some point. So we're trying to make that the nursery and connect it to our bedroom, which is the addition. Um, and then the connector would be above that awning. This thing is, for all practical purposes, invisible to the public way. Correct. Okay. The if you take a look at the aerial photograph, it's pretty easy to see if you go to Google. 900 computers running in front of me. I gotta go to, go to Google. Okay, anyway, I, 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 tr I, I trust you implicitly. <laughs> the, the, the thing that, um, I don't know whether you were getting at, or whoever's getting at, in terms of, of it needing to be lowered, it, I, my view, especially with the slate roof, is that it would need to be lower than the rake board on the slate roof. So it would need to tuck in underneath. And I know that that's of the old structure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, the thinnest structure is probably the glass in just in terms of the thinnest structure, but I'm not sure whether you know so if if it's a little lower than what you're showing it's going to have to be probably six inches lower than what you're showing but i'm not entirely certain that that glass structures really get built that way um although boy the one that you've got an example of uh, down at the bottom sure is slick in terms of its detailing which number is that there's three examples. Well, it's the all glass one. The all glass one. Number three. Yeah. I know what, Con I mean, I'm not disagreeing with what Connie's talking about. I'm just saying that that part of the problem here is is minimizing the thickness of this, this whole structure. And nothing is thinner than a piece of one inch insulated glass. Even, 
I suppose even if the walls weren't made that way, if the walls had more traditional windows and the, the roof was glass. That's just my two cents. I would say we're not as worried about what the material is versus like the height of it, because I feel like it may only be as wide as a doorway. So I don't know if there's any way to make it wider. I I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't. I think the roof line is pretty steep as it is. So we're not sure, you know, how wide the connector can even be to be functional. By the time you've gotten down to a height where, yeah, yeah right. I mean, it's showing at eight feet, seven inches right now. Yeah, I think that's my, what my point is. Up. My point is, I don't necessarily care what this material is because there isn't anyone who's ever going to see it other than one of your neighbors and you. I guess, uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. A uh, question would be, does it need to have a window on the sides in the first place? If you're just trying to make a connection, um, that that may help the, if you don't have windows, that could help you get a little more space down. Um, with windows gonna require a certain head height, so you don't have a, a knee high window kind of thing. So that's another option to, to widen that up a little bit is to not have windows. Contractor, it has to have a window because I think that the um, space we're going to turn into a nursery wouldn't have a window. Gotcha. And that's going to have to be an operable window and it's going to have to be mm -hmm. large enough to allow for egress. That, that space is if what you just said is true, that space is de facto going to become part of the nursery. If if you can't get a window in the nursery, then this space becomes part of the nursery and it's going to have to have a, uh, a window that meets the egress requirements of the city of Columbus. And then just, just for curiosity's sake, does I'm assuming a nursery would, would uh, equate to a um sleeping unit for code i think so if yeah. that's the case is there enough uh square footage with enough head height to meet code as well with that tight little upstairs space just asking the question i don't gotta answer that's just another consideration um, what is the space that's underneath the proposed connector like what's in that existing connector uh, our kitchen how tall is the ceiling in that kitchen? I'm just wondering if you can modify the floor so you step down from your bedroom mm -hmm. and get more height and then step back yes. up to get to the nursery. It's possible because we do have to replace part of that roof. No. I think you need to talk to the building department. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need to look at codes. For head clearances and door sizes. Yeah. And landings and such. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the idea of stepping down is, is an interesting idea, but then what Brent just said starts playing into it. I guess you've got that, you're showing that now on, on the plan, um, a step down onto that roof, because I guess the, the two floor heights are not the same. They need to have a coat shaft. Do we want to go around the room um, just to talk about materiality? Do we do we care given its location? Uh, Commissioner Panzer, do you have an option of the three options? Materiality. I I don't. I I no. Okay. Commissioner Durst. I agree with Jay that the pitch of the connector has to be under the lake board, so 
you know, whatever material they have to use steel to get it thinned down, I'm willing to consider it. Mr. Thiel? Yeah, as long as it's under the rate board, but I, I think they need to go talk to code people because I think none of these are going to work. Commissioner McCoy? Uh, I agree with all that's been said. Commissioner okay. Foley? Uh, no further comments. And the chairs, and no further comments as well. He said before. Okay. So just to make sure we're understanding correctly, if it could be up to code, it, it wouldn't be dead in the water from your perspective, but just need to make sure that it can be to code. That's a correct statement. And I think everybody pretty much concurred that you want to keep it down below that existing yeah. ridge. Yeah, under the rake board. Anything else you need from us? I don't believe so. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. It's your help. All right. Uh, we'll end up with uh, item number 15, GV-20-06-037, conceptual for 724 Jaeger Street. And for my list here, we're expecting Laura and Jeff Less. Uh, it'll actually be Elijah Less on behalf of Laura and Jeff. Uh, Mr. Les, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Elijah Les. Thank you. Connie. Um, okay, so the, we had this uh, listed as conceptual. They would like to have a, a vote. Um, this is for an addition to add a second story to an existing rear addition. Um, the the issues that the staff saw was. Um, the proposed addition would eliminate one existing window on the rear elevation. Uh, there's nothing else that it would cover over that would be historic fabric. The existing one-story rear addition is equal in width or wider than the main block of the house. So uh, new additions are generally required to be pulled in from the main block. So not sure how that could be achieved. Um, and the, the one uh, issue, other issue would be that glass block windows uh, are not approved. Thank you. Sorry, Connie. Well, oh, glass block. I'm sorry. Uh, they had asked for some glass block windows in the foundation. Yep. I see. And that's not something that we're uh, strictly dedicated to. So if the commission doesn't find it to be appropriate, um, we could obviously seek alternative options. Okay. Well, Mr. Les, anything else to add before we kick over to the commissioners? Um, really, I think it's just um, I'm here to answer any questions. Um, I think one of the things I've talked with um, the owners about too is I think we might be um, removing the uh, screened-in porch on the existing porch, um, so that'll be a function that will no longer be there. Okay. And that'll be on the existing front porch. Got it right there. I'm page, sorry. So you're there. you're removing that from the application? Yes. Yeah. We. We no longer um, would like that to be part of the application. It'll just remain as and the structure will be painted. Um, any uh, trim will be repaired as necessary and the gutters will be replaced as necessary. Anthony? Yes. Can I just say too that uh, this was a, a pretty lengthy application. So there actually are things that if this is continued or if you just uh, make comments, there's several things that would be able to be staff approved before next month, which would be things like uh, painting, uh, storm windows, doors, porch railing, gutters, downspouts, and things like and removing shutters and things like that. So uh, the main issue is really the addition. Okay. Um, so my one comment is going to be: it's a pretty, pretty light set of drawings for an addition. I would kind of digest this. I didn't read all the way through this one before. Um, you have sections and all those parts and pieces. Yeah. yeah. And that's something um, we wanted to discuss with the commission um, and get feedback on it as well. Um, we are consulting with a structural engineer to get more um, information um, based on that addition. Um, so I think we're kind of relying on your feedback as well uh, for some additional comments and information. 
Um, the other, the other issue, or the other thing is that that we do not have not, um, with the exception of some failed uh, experiments, approved uh, Hardy Plank uh, Hardy products on historic structures, on additions to historic structures. Um, okay, I. Uh... The thing with that one is that um, since that's an addition to the historic structure um, and with the aluminum siding that's on it currently, um, you know, we'd be open to other solutions um, as well. Traditionally, uh, with the commission, you know, wood siding is kind of a, a tried and true standard. Uh, if you're looking for a, a composite alternative, the Boral makes a product out there that has been approved. Uh, tested and approved. Uh, a lot of folks who go the Hardy route go the Boral route. Boral does tend to be more expensive than Hardy, but it gives you that uh, that long term, low maintenance option. Um, Just as a note, Anthony, they do not make lap siding anymore. Okay. So I mean, not that this has to be lap siding, but Boral stopped discontinued their lap siding product. So you have to go. You have to wind up with a different with a different profile. Um, and yeah, we would be open to suggestions. So if you guys would prefer to see wood siding, a wood lap siding on it, um, we definitely would be uh, more than willing to go that route. Wow, my computer just lost there. Yeah, this one's kind of freezing on me too, but can I ask, so we're clear that the existing addition that you're ripping the roof off, that is not a historic addition. Obviously the pictures seem to indicate not, but there's nothing underneath there to indicate that it would be. Uh, not that we're aware of. Um, yeah, we're we're not aware that it would be. And the only reason I ask is because the way it, it shows is you've got the siding just going over, extending up, which if that was historic, we would want to make sure we differentiate between the old and new. Yeah, there's what's, nothing. What's the, what's the foundation material on that addition? Uh, we believe it to be concrete. Appears to be a poured concrete. We didn't pull the uh, sandborns in this, did we? No, we haven't haven't done that yet. Okay. There's a picture of it. Yeah, there's a picture. It's blowing up that it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in talking with the structural engineer, um, as we were assessing it, it appears what they have done is it's um, a poured concrete with kind of a parged coat over it. Um, the parched coat kind of gives almost a resemblance to um, a stone uh, foundation with parging over it. So my, my only concern is photos being grainy online. Can't 100% tell. Don't have, we don't have the engineer's statement um we don't have the stand to look at that's my only concern is could or couldn't there's no de definitive evidence either way so I, I would lean towards probably not but I, I can't make determination with what's there right uh, I, I, sorry I, mr chairman i i Connie just had a really good suggestion here, and that is that there's a lot to be done here. And I think that the we don't necessarily know enough about the structures. That's where I was getting to. Yeah. Sorry. We're fine. Um, so let's, Connie, do you want to point out the stuff that you believe could be a preferable step wise between now and, and if we continue this forward? Um, I had just made notes to myself here, uh, retaining existing window frames, uh, painting porch and foundation. I think um, I would have to see if that's already painted or not, uh, because generally if it's not painted, it shouldn't be painted. Uh, they're requesting new store windows, uh, a door, porch railings, uh, new gutters and downspouts, uh, removing a metal screen door, Repairing existing trim and removing existing shutters. Those are the things that I pulled off of the drawings. I don't, I don't see any of those being a problem for us. 
And uh, just to note as well, um, the existing foundation for both um, the historic structure as well as the existing addition um, is painted currently. I just want to say that that's a great porch and I'm glad you're deciding not to screen that in because that's a beautiful porch. Yeah, absolutely. Was there an issue with the width of the existing or when they pull siding off, it might be even actually if there's more layers that it might not even be that wide, you know. Because generally additions are pulled in a little bit from, uh, from the main block. Because you're saying because it aligns right now. As exists. With the house or maybe even a little wider, I can't tell. So as existing, the footprint um, is on the south side of the property, about uh, seven inches off the main body of the house. Um, the goal uh, being when the addition is put on is to keep the uh, footprint of below um, as to not disrupt um, too much of the original or the existing foundation, I should say, as well as the existing uh, first floor addition, um, but to work with that and uh, build it upward. One more item I think approved uh, the gutters on the porch. Uh, we're showing looks like the house has stop gutters above and have the K style on the porch. Yes. Um, and so we, um, the, the previous, um, it, it seems to have fallen in a little bit of a state of disrepair. Um, so one of the things, if we could get a staff approval um, for a repair of that trim, um, as well as the gutters for the porch and main body of the house, um, we'd appreciate it. Um, currently, with rain, um, it is causing deterioration to um, the trim as well as the interior of the home. Any of the commissioners speak up? I don't see anything that's on the existing structure on the application that looks problematic. It looks like it's painting, storm windows, uh, fixing some trim and whatnot. The only thing that looked problematic was the glass block windows. Any any thoughts about that? Any disagreement? I agree. Okay. Um, so of the glass block windows, I, I would say probably resoundingly you'll get a no from the commission. <laughs> we vote on it. Um, is there another option you want to propose? Um, I would have to check, um, but I think what we would probably look at doing is um, just trying to find uh, similar replacement windows to what's there. Um, the reason uh, that we're looking to replace those windows in the foundation right now is that they're um, wood windows and they're obviously not very well sealed, um, which leads to water intrusion in the basement. So our goal is to obviously keep water out of the foundation. So um, even if we go with something uh, similar in nature as to what's there, um, I think that's a viable option. There's an approved window. Uh, there's a window on the approved list now that um, is a synthetic window. I remember, is it aluminum clad? Connie, you remember? Is it aluminum or is it fiberglass? Yes, and the commission actually has also approved the um, um, Infinity, I think. I'd have to go back and look as a basement window. And it is one, one window that we, we approve for basements only. Okay, um, I think we would definitely be willing to um, go that option then. Um, like I said, strictly just to prevent any more moisture from getting in the basement. And, and though, if you if you pick one of those windows from the staff approval list, the staff can approve that as well. Okay. That's not a problem. I think as far as the landscaping goes, any issues from the commission on proposed landscaping? I did not see any. Okay. I want to say if there's no concerns on the landscaping, we can we could uh approve landscaping plan is submitted. Um the new covered porched raised wood deck. 
that that attaches to the house. Is that correct? Yes, and that'll be under the uh, new covered um, addition, obviously. Yeah, I would think that we probably want to wait for the, the new addition to come back to look at that. Absolutely. Yes. So with, that, with that said, I would feel comfortable with, with staff approving everything currently proposed on the main house with the the amendment of the windows to be from the staff approved list, uh, as well as the landscaping as submitted. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, regarding the landscape, um, as far as the the materials were okay, but I'm trying to find out what they're doing with the trees because you're basically removing all the large plant material and not putting. So, um, what it appears to be, what um, or, uh, appears to be existing right now is actually. Um, not so much uh, trees, more so overgrown shrubs and hedges. Okay. Um, what has happened also is part of the reason that we would like them to be removed is that they are, um, again, negatively affecting the property. Um, they have overgrown onto the property, um, which has caused obviously um, damage to the house as well as um, issues regarding um, insurance and obtaining insurance for the property. Um, so we would like to have them removed um, so that way we can uh, put in new landscaping um, that would actually be obviously um, in keeping with the size and, and, and preventing any more damage from happening to the house. So I think when it comes to the landscape materials, then those should be brought in with the addition. Okay. Reasonable. So are you saying you, you don't want to look at the include landscaping at this time? You want to wait for the addition to landscaping? Yeah, I think it should be brought in with the addition. Okay. Just for clarification, the two street trees are intended to remain. They weren't called out. So that's uh, my understanding. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, um, would you like us to break this application into two applications? Uh, A being uh, the work to the existing property as we, as we discussed, and B being the addition and the landscaping. Why are we approving, excuse me, what are we being asked to approve other than what's going to staff approval? So the application currently is for the addition as well. But it's conceptual, so it's, I mean. It's conceptual, I, I forgot, my apologies. It's a long day. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, so it, I mean, Connie can approve whatever Connie can approve and the rest of it comes back to us. You are correct, 100%. Cool. Action needed. Connie, do you have everything you need? Yes, I do, and my phone's going to die soon. Okay. So are we all. So is this meeting. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking your time and staying late. Thank you. All right. That concludes all our agenda items. Is there a motion to adjourn? First, second. there. <laughs> Only has a second. Any questions on the motion? I'll take the roll. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Neil. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. We're adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Bye, everybody. All right. Good night.